Peace to the saints. Today we will have a conversation about self-improvement and dealing with challenges. A critically important pairing because there will be no success unless you can manage challenges and in fact anticipate them and be comfortable with it, continue smiling and progressing. The sad reality is that many people have been fooled into thinking that things will be all smooth sailing. Maybe all smooth sailing because you're a millionaire. Maybe all smooth sailing because you got a dream girl and a dream job. Well, always life will throw something in there to uh, add a bit of excitement, if you will. It's all about your perception. I want to have this talk with you all because of a, a number of events. And I, I always give organic lessons, which is to say I observe something and I say, you know, the audience would benefit greatly from hearing a perspective on this commonly experienced phenomena in life. And so here I am to have the conversation with you. Per usual, if you are a man who uh, pays what he owes and would like to support the work, you can do so using the information below via Cash App or PayPal. Uh, may I start by showing love with our tradition, show love to those who show love to you. I do want to acknowledge Abdul, who became a member at thesassin.com. That's T-H-E-S-A-S-N.com. I also want to acknowledge uh, Marcos supporting the work via Cash App, right? It's Peace of the Saints tuition. And I also acknowledge long-term members such as Joshua, much appreciated. Shout out to Dan, became a member at thesassin.com, T-H-E-S-A-S-N. And I also acknowledge Mr. Williams, just became a boss level member at thesassin.com, T-H-E-S-A-S-N. You are appreciated. And I do encourage all of you to be a part of something. The most dangerous thing you can do in this world is just to be a, a, an isolated individual. You should be a part of something. I want to show much respect to those men who I'll be meeting with in Vietnam shortly. There'll be about 35 of us. And so it'll be a very powerful thing. It'll be a a defining experience, one of those memories that you look upon fondly. So I'm very excited for that. You all must live life. Don't watch life, live life. Bra writes, Marquette, I've been doing well with deadlines at work. At work, I also see my efficiency skyrocket when deadlines get close. But when I'm the boss slash working on my own business, I get very little done. Well, that tells you something about your will to win. And it tells you something about your psychology and your inability to manipulate your psychology. Uh, you speak of being the boss. This is really an important thing to me because I couldn't be anything else. Oppositely, I don't do well when I'm under other people. You know, I'm not thinking as sharply, as clearly. I'm not as ambitious. I don't feel as empowered. I'm not as creative. And so I, I fit much better into the boss's role. And those of you who would like to fit better into the boss's role, I highly encourage you to look into Boss University if someone would drop the link. And similar to the black box, that's a work that I'm very proud of because it unlocks things that will last you for a lifetime and benefit you greatly. And I think everyone should find an area of life in which they can be the boss. The most important thing you'll take away of from Boss University is being the boss of yourself, which is to say to be able to exercise influence over the self. What you're describing right now is the inability to operate uh, effectively on your own interest. And that's quite a sad thing, really, when you think about it, saying that, hey, I'll work hard for someone else, but I won't work as vigorously when it benefits me. That's a psychological thing that you have to deal with. The first section of Boss University, we address mindset, self-improvement, barriers that we put in our own way. And as you understand life better, you'll come to know with certainty that much of what we suffer in life is of our own making, just as much of what we enjoy in life is similarly of our own making. So I highly recommend Boss University for those of you who don't have it. And because it's such a great work, I review it on a regular basis. There's some things that I want to achieve in the near term which is why I'm going to go back through Boss University. And for those of you who get it within the next 24 hours, I'll do a live seminar as I go back through some of the key lessons in Boss University. I'm doing that for two benefits. One, for myself, because the knowledge is that good and it requires repeating. And secondly, for those of you who didn't get a chance to hear it live. Of course, you have in excess of eight hours of content on Boss University, both video lecture, but also it's written out as well and includes infographics. It's very rich. 
But know this, anytime you choose to do something, be serious about what you're doing. Be serious about winning. Uh, for example, I saw on the community tab, one gentleman writes, uh, he had a bunch of questions about Boston University. And in my head, I was thinking, I hope he doesn't buy it. Really, I do, uh, because he's not ready for it. Uh, you want to be serious about being successful. As a business person, I've realized that you know when someone makes a purchase and they're not serious about it, these are the persons who uh, they return the purchase, they want a refund, or they have you know a bunch of complaints. I don't have time to deal with that. I want to deal with people who are serious about getting to the next level, winners, which is you know winners essentially. And the beautiful thing about me seeing the people who take certain courses like Boston University or the Master Communicator course. This helps me filter out and filter in the people that I might potentially want to collaborate and work with because I get to know them on a more personal basis. As I said, I'm going to do a live seminar, which means you'll be on the call. You can ask questions and engage. That's how I become familiar with people. And for me, it's like a pipeline for talent. You see, if I were to need someone to do web design or video editing or be a videographer or an assistant or a salesperson, I always go to those who are familiar, of course. And these are you know, ways in which I can become more familiar with people, but also I know who has the will to win. Thank you to those folks supporting the work. Much respect, indeed. May I acknowledge via PayPal, uh, shout to Alan, writes, Peace of the Saints. Always good to see you. Alan's been supporting on a consistent basis. Now let's talk. So the first piece of advice I would like to provide is to simplify life. You may have heard me say this before, it is one of the most challenging things, especially given the nature of today's society, wherein you have so many broken humans who are mentally unwell. And the thing that they typically do is they'll spread their brokenness, they'll spread their foolish thinking, they'll spread their negativity to you. And the greatest challenge is that you have to keep them at bay, keep them away from you. Some of them you might be in a romantic relationship with. Some of these broken human beings might be in your family. Others might be reaching out to you. And as my status improves and as my clout grows, I would like to point out some things that are on the path to greater success so that you all can anticipate and be successful. Uh, the truth is in terms of true status and true power, and uh, money and earnings, I don't think the social media game is as good as the tech game. You hear me? However, you know, when you're a successful tech entrepreneur, you might be making more money, but you're not getting as much clout and reputation. You're not exposed to as many people. You can go places quietly and people don't know who you are, which I actually find to be quite nice as an introvert. As I'm now I'm getting more clout and notoriety. I'm exposed to more persons. The thing that's really fortunate for myself and others when I was in the tech space is that the people I'm exposed to are generally of higher IQ, better family background, uh, higher income. So I'm exposed to people who are more worthwhile. In the social media space, I'm exposed to the general public, most of whom are underachievers, dimwits, and uh, they want something from you. And I want to give a few notes on how to deal with this, but also a couple of notes on success and pursuing it and also dealing with challenges. Uh, the first piece in terms of um, where I'm positioned now is that you're in a position where you're attractive and everyone's goal should be to be attractive. Attractiveness is great. You know, women come to you, guys want to be you, guys want to do deals with you, people think you have something that they want. Being attractive is a good thing, especially if you can attract uh, the people you want. However, sometimes you become universally attractive and people come to you to get something from you. I've mentioned before that there are really two sides to consider there is the offer. And there is the request. Is someone coming to you with an offer or are they coming to you with a request? Are they offering you something that will enhance you, make you wealthier, make you happier, bring more beautiful women around you? Are they giving you an offer, something that will benefit you, potentially them as well, but definitely benefit you? That's an offer. Then there are those who come to you with a request. They need something from you. They're broke. They want some money. Uh, they want a loan. They want to collaborate. And the funny thing is when they want to collaborate, they want to collaborate on something that benefits them, but not you. Most people are going to come to you with a request. And the worst part about it is that these are the people that 
you absolutely should not work with under any circumstance. These are the people you should be suspicious of, scared of. Um, these are the people who will hurt you essentially. And the worst trait about these persons is that they, they don't have any concept of empathy, meaning they haven't considered, well, how does this benefit the other person? They don't have any concept of reciprocity, meaning can we win together? They're just thinking about how they can win. They don't have any concept of true friendship. They're not coming to you to like build a relationship that will endure. They're coming to you trying to get a quick win, trying to get a come up off of you. And they don't have real intelligence because intelligence would tell them if this person's successful, they're clearly smart enough to know that what I'm pitching to them isn't going to help them out. It's just going to help me out. So these are all folks you want to keep at bay. I want to tell a true story of someone that has approached me with this kind of a thing recently uh, so that you guys can keep these people away because there are many of them. Some of them are you know, reasonably successful and they want to use you to get greater success, but to no benefit of yours. Uh, as you all may know, I do have a number of folks who work for me. I have multiple cell phones. When they come and clock in at work, they'll utilize one of the cell phones for various things, you know, often customer service, right? Taking customer service phone calls for different businesses that I have. There was one particular phone call that occurred after hours. My assistant had already left. The cell phone was right by me, so I go ahead and answer it. That's the kind of businessman I am. If I'm able and I can provide customer service, even if it's after hours, I want to do it. I want the customer to feel like we're going above and beyond. I answer the phone and the individual says, oh, hey, is this Marquette? I didn't expect you to answer. Yes, this is Marquette. How may I help you? Now, there's only three particular businesses that give out this phone number. So these are merchandising businesses. And so I say, how, how may I help you? He says, oh, well, I have this book and my book is about X, Y, and Z. And I'd like to uh, have you do a review of my book. I say, how did you get this phone number? He says, oh, well, you know, I got this product and then it showed this as a customer service phone number. I say, okay, well, you know, this phone number is in fact for customer service for, for that set of products. Um, so if you have any other items for Marquette Burton, you can send it to this email address and it'll be filtered there, but this phone number is for customer service. He says, okay, sure, no problem. So we get off the phone. And I get it. You know, people want to shoot their shot. Fantastic. Then I get a text message on the same number day later. Hey, I got this book. You know, you, you know, you should check out this book. And, and I'm just like, word, didn't we already explain to you that this phone number is for customer service is not for you to pitch things. Then I get an email from the same guy, not to my assistant, which is where I gave him the email address to my assistant. He emails me. Hey, you know, I just want to remind you about my book. And uh, in my brain, I'm just thinking, wow, this is very sad. I, I would never uh, collaborate with you under any circumstance because you're a dishonest person. Uh, you are not a listener. Listening is a very critical skill in all things. You're not a listener. You have no level of empathy over the fact that I'm extraordinarily busy and you're burdening me with something that has no benefit to me. We have no previous relationship. I'm not familiar with you. I don't know your name. I don't know your face. You've never taken a consultation with me. You've never taken one of my courses. I don't know anything about you. You could be a completely low quality person, yet you expect me to do you a favor. It just doesn't make any sense. So after all these reach outs, I see, okay, you know, now I have to create a, additional layers of barrier between myself and the public because you have some members of the public who are completely insane, completely insane and completely unaware, not realizing that, you know, he actually, not only did he fail to get a collaboration, he actually made me one who considers him to be an enemy and a wicked person. You see, because an honest person would have followed the directions. The truth is he would have had an opportunity for success. I gave him the contact information, my assistant. He would have sent the information through. The assistant would have reviewed the information and then he would have had a chance. But instead, he didn't do what I recommended to him directly. He did something else and he was a pesterance. And so now there's no opportunity, even if he has a phenomenal book on a meaningful topic that I could utilize, I would never utilize it. And what's more is I actually just don't like him at this point. And that's a sad thing to see. But what I want to remind you all of is there are people who come into your life with a request. They need something. They need money. They need a collaboration. It can even be women. They need you to be their sugar daddy. They need you to pay their bills. They need you to keep them from being bored. They need you for psychological stability. I don't want to deal with anyone who has a need. I want to deal exclusively with people who have an offer. They have an offer. 
They can benefit me. Hell, nothing wrong with them benefiting themselves in the process, but surely they can benefit me. And what you don't realize, I want to remind all of you guys, especially those of you who want to be successful, because you may have never heard this. And this is something more likely your father would tell you. If you have a, a, a father who's a great man, a strong man, and a wise man, which is not often the case, your father would tell you that no one loves you in this world. No one cares about you in this world. Each human being has their own self-interest, which is to say very rarely is someone going to do something that benefits just you out of the kindness of their heart. It won't happen. I promise you. That's precisely why in various uh, capital cities in sub-Saharan Africa, you have many people who are multimillionaires, even some billionaires. Yet you still have folks living in shanty towns. Their, their own people live in shanty towns, live without clean drinking water, and the millionaires and billionaires don't do anything to help them. Why? Because it's not in their self-interest. That is the true nature of the world. You'd fool yourself to think people just want to help you just because you're alive. It's not the case. So always pursue a mutual benefit and be able to clearly demonstrate how the other person benefits. And more importantly, you have to demonstrate that up front. Even if you're coming with what you think is an offer, it might not be a good enough offer. I get offers all the time. You know, recently a young man uh, sent across an offer. He said, hey, I can do X, Y, and Z for you. I can do this, I can do this, and I can do this. All things that he could do for me. However, the true question is, how many of those things make me money? I don't want to do things that are not going to turn into a dollar. So, for example, people all the time say, Marquette, why don't you have timestamps on your video? I don't watch the videos. You hear me? I make the videos, but I don't watch them. You know, timestamps makes it easier for the viewer. True. However, do people decide to buy my products based on timestamps? No. Um, do I run advertisements on my videos? No. So it doesn't matter how long or how short they watch because I don't run ads on the videos. Furthermore, I'm making the videos for people who are consuming long uh, long form content who really want to learn and grow. Your truck drivers, they're driving 14, 15 hours. They can listen to a three hour podcast. They don't need timestamps. They're driving. I'm making content for people who are going on long runs, you know, 20 kilometers. You know, they're running for hours. They don't need timestamps. I'm making content for the leadership class thinkers. So as a result, they don't need timestamps. They're not skipping through my content. And I, I get to choose to do that because that's what's important to me is people who are the leadership class thinkers. I'm trying to filter in and filter out the intelligent people. Now, timestamps, if it can make me money in some way, yeah, I'd put in some timestamps, but it makes me not a penny. So why would I pay someone? Meaning why would I spend money when it's not going to return money? That's not an investment. That's a foolish allocation of capital. So you always have to ask yourself, if I'm going to ask this person to spend a dollar, how can I get them to spend a dollar knowing that they'll get more than a dollar back? Huh? Okay. Pay attention. That's business. Every man should be a businessman. Every man should think like a businessman. Okay. You're not thinking. Shout out to Jeremy supporting the work via Cash App. May I also acknowledge uh, Charlie coming with a baller alert, right? He's paying what I owe. Appreciate you. And it will get better. I got some game to give. Shout out to Austin. He writes, thank you, big homie. About to hit the gym in a real way. Shout out to the ones getting it in. It's inspirational. T comes in via cash app, supporting the work. Always consistent. Shout out to Britain Health, supporting the work. Sends in tuition. He's been supporting for a long time. Shout out to Christopher. He writes tuition to the big homie. Peace to the saints. Shout out to Quat. He writes peace to the saints tuition. Shout out to the uh, the entrepreneurs. You heard me? Who are making a foundation for themselves financially. Shout out to uh, Jason. He writes thank you for everything. I appreciate you. I acknowledge Orion. Writes tuition. Shout out to the real ones. You dig? So there you guys, you understand that first piece, which is the difference between a request and an offer. And here's something I really want you all to understand, especially if you're a man, even if you're a woman, but especially if you're a man, if you're a man, you always have to have an offer, a legitimate offer. If you're a woman, you can have a request. Some dummies will give you what you ask for. You know, I kid you not. Just, um, just a little bit before I got on this stream, I was looking at my notes and I'll go through the notes. Actually, let me go through the notes real quick with you. And then I'll, I'll tell you this anecdote because this is why we listen to good information because it makes us take action and it takes, it causes us to take action that's going to benefit us, right? That's why we listen to good information. So check this out. This is on simplifying your life. A part of simplifying your life is not repeating mistakes. Nothing wrong with making a mistake. That is human. 
to err is to be human. We're all going to make mistakes. We're going to have challenges. And for my business students, I always teach them in business, you're going to get cheated. People are going to lie to you. People are going to try to trick you. People are going to commit fraud. That's business. That's a part of the game. Just like if you play basketball, you're going to get fouled sometimes. If you are engaged in boxing, you're going to get a black eye every now and then. That's a part of the game. Enjoy it and expect it. Don't be surprised or disappointed when you leave the ring with, a, with your nose bleeding. This is the game. However, the question is, how do you reduce those aspects of the game? How do you reduce injury from foul? How do you reduce leaving the boxing ring with a bloody nose? You improve your defense. A critical component of the defense of life in finding greater success is not repeating errors. You see, when young men ask me, hey, Mark, what would you tell a 20-year-old? I often say, oh, your life will go like this, which is to say it will trend upward as long as you minimize your vices. You reduce the number of bad things that you do, the number of bad activities you participate in, which is to say things like consuming alcohol, drugs, intoxicants, going to the club too much, dealing with loose women, being out at odd hours of the night. If you can reduce things like that, your life is going to go like this, inevitably, even without you hyper-focusing on doing things that display merit, without you building skill, without you being more intelligent, just avoiding doing the wrong things will help you get to the right place. Huh? That's one piece. Another thing is avoiding the wrong people, avoiding bad people, avoiding selfish people, avoiding dishonest people, avoiding people who will ultimately hurt you. Huh? And here's the funny thing. Sometimes we encounter these people, they show us, they reveal themselves to us. We can see that they are someone who is dishonest, not honorable, not reliable. Uh, you know, It's an ex-girlfriend that you broke up with, but you keep letting her come back into your life. It's a family member who's a friend to me. It's like they act like they love you, but they really are jealous and they hate on you. You know, it's a friend who doesn't support your products. He doesn't, you know, you know, you post something on social media, he'll never like it. You're like, whoa, I thought we were friends. You know, now me, I can't tell my friends support my stuff or not because I have too many followers at this level. I'm just talking about like for everyday people. You know, these individuals are bad people, but you let them back into your life. Uh, you know that ex-girlfriend is is toxic, but you let her back into your life. You know that that friend of yours is not really a friend, but you let them back into your life. That's a mistake on your part that will cause you to suffer. You clean these people out of your life and you clean them out of your life for good. Uh, yes, for good. Marquette, are you saying be unforgiving? Oh, now you can forgive them, but that doesn't mean they, they need to be a part of your future. Yeah, you can forgive them. You don't need to hold on to anger but they don't need to be a part of your future. And there, there's a major difference there. So for example, in fact, I was just on Instagram, a uh, chick was DMing me on Instagram before I got on this call. I made a request of her, which is what I always do with women because you need to be service oriented as a woman. That is why a man has a woman in his life to serve. If you don't want to serve, you need to go. So she was DMing me and I said, hey, do this. And she didn't get it done. And mind you, the time that I like things to get done, it's now a clock. Now a clock. When I ask for something, I want it now. I said, hey, do this. And then she's like, you know, BSing, talking about some other things. And I said, hey, you're talking to a man here. We don't play games. And then she writes back, why? (laughs) Block. We're done here. Block. We're done here. She has no other way to contact me. She doesn't have my phone number, nothing like that. She's done for good unless I would make the dumb decision to bring her back into my life. And there's no need. Some people talk about abundance. When you actually have abundance, block, never unblock. You hear me? Yeah, I I will forget about you within eight hours. There will be 10 to 20 good looking women that will be a better fit than you are. The only time we let these people who are low quality back into our life is if we're not really living life at a high level. And if we're not living life at a high level, anyone will do. If you are living life at a high level, you need people around you who are high quality. For example, I got a question earlier today from one of the members at thesassin.com, T-H-E-S-A-S-N.com, a member. As he is a member, I show him the respect that he shows me. So he said, hey, I had this business situation, might need a lawyer. I told him this particular type of lawyer that you need, I don't have any of these because I'm not in that business. I have a friend who's in that business. He might not have one in your municipality, but I'm going to ask him. I already sent in the question to my buddy. I said, hey, do you know a lawyer in this industry in this municipality? So we'll see what he says. But the point is, those are good friends to have, right? I got friends who are legitimate business people who have great connections. Those are the kind of friends you want. You can get something valuable from them and there's always a fair exchange. Huh? That's why this little broad, it was so easy. Block, you're done. Because she doesn't offer any value. As Ye said, 
there's a thousand yous, there's only one of me. It will be very hard for her to replace me in her life. I can replace her in my life by not even doing anything. Some broad, some thought is going to DM me like in the next 10 minutes, right? Who is just like her and probably better because it's not hard to find beauty in this world, but it is hard to find service, intelligence, and all of those things. So I clicked block on her. Why? According to the principle that I'm sharing with you, which is don't repeat mistakes. She showed me she's an imbecile. I blocked her so she does not have the opportunity to do any more stupid things in my life. Huh? Very rarely do people improve. Very rarely do people change. You'd be deluding yourself to think someone's going to improve. No, generally not, and especially not for you. They got to do it for themselves. Uh, we're about half an hour in. Um, seems like most folks uh, haven't had a chance to support the game. I'm going to go ahead and take a pause for the call. Shout out to Robert uh, supporting the work. Shout out to the real ones. Appreciate you. May I also acknowledge Marcus. He writes, feeling unappreciated at my job watching others who have been there less time and are less knowledgeable being promoted. Should I bring this up to my boss or just start looking for other positions? Peace to the saints. Number one, you should always be looking for other positions or more accurately, let me say better opportunities. You should always be doing that. In life, you should always be saying, what's better? What's next? <laughs> you hear me? What's the greater win? Progress. It's necessary. That's called ambition. You should have been looking for that anyways. Why? Because your boss doesn't care about you. Your corporation doesn't care about you. There's one person who should always care about you, you. And so you have to be constantly laying plans for that, okay? Because listen to me, man, you might wake up tomorrow on the broad you've been laying next to for five, six years. She feel a little bit different. You dig? You might wake up tomorrow and your parents got a new child. That's their focus now. You heard me? You might wake up tomorrow and your best friend, your man, your homie. Now he didn't just found a broad he's deeply in love with. He's focused on her. Yeah. Listen, there's only one soldier on your side in life's war. That's you. You'll always be on your side. Now, if you ain't fighting for you, it's all bad. And you need to be fighting constantly. That's just the nature of being a human being. It's toilsome. You got to keep going. So don't you ever let your foot off the gas. OK, so number one, get comfortable with your foot on the gas. Get comfortable working every day. Get comfortable. Focus on you. OK, that's number one. So if you weren't already doing that, hey, hey, hey. now here's a great reminder. Uh, every day, Monday through Sunday, make it a payday. You dig? So you need to be focusing on your bread and your advancement. That's number one. Number two, when you say, should I bring this up to my boss? Now, I want you to think about this. And this is deep. OK, pay attention. Um, you don't need to be mad that you're, you haven't been promoted because other people are getting promoted. That's jealousy. That's a comparison basis. You should be mad that you weren't promoted because you're delivering good work on a consistent basis. And you should have been promoted already just based on you being you you delivering the goods, okay? Just because you saw other people getting promoted, now it reminds you. You see, it is a good reminder, but it shouldn't be the reminder. You should have already went into that job with a master plan and said, hey, within three months, I want to get to this pay rate and this title. Within six months, I want to get to this pay rate and this title, which has nothing to do with other people coming in the door. That was just a reminder that you're standing in the same place because they're walking past you, okay? So from now on, you need to make a plan for yourself. You have revealed to yourself that you ain't have a plan for yourself because you would have had a natural pre-existing schedule that would have dictated when you plan to get promoted. So you have already been facilitating those conversations with your boss. OK, now remember this. Your boss is not there thinking, hmm, when am I going to promote Marcus? When is Marcus going to make more money? Hell no. Nah. Your boss is there thinking, when am I going to get promoted? When am I going to make more money? How do I increase profits in the company? How do I get more equity in the company? How do I get more uh, good employees in the company? They're not thinking about you. Let me give you a clue, buddy. As a business owner, if you can get somebody who's high quality to work for a low rate, they're going to you're going to be happy if you as a boss can get a high quality worker to work for a low wage and they're not complaining, let them do it. Duh. It, it's more beneficial to you. You save money. Don't you want to save money? Your boss wants to save money. Don't you want to save money? The corporation wants to save money. Okay. So hell not. Nah, they're not going to pay you more money just because they're going to forget about you. They're going to try to keep you in a low pay, pay rate. You have to bring in the competition. You have to be able to say, hey, I do X, Y, and Z job. I'm currently being paid $20 an hour. I think it should be $23 an hour. Then he's going to say, oh, well, why is that? Well, because I work at CVS, but I just got an offer from, you know, fill in the blank target and they're offering me 23. So can you match it? You know, I love working here. I'd like to continue on. But if you can't match, it, I'm going to have to take this better opportunity. Can you blame me? Boom. Let's get going. 
And let me tell you, I meet so many people that I could tell they don't want to win. There's a young lady uh, I was talking to recently, and don't you ever trust trust women about money because they don't really care about money. You dig? Uh, Shorty was telling me, I said, hey, your job sucks and you're not getting very much money. You need a new job, okay? She was like, oh, you think so? No, I know so. That's not why I'm asking you. I'm telling you, I'm dictating right now. You hear me? You need a better job. Get you a better job. And she says, okay. And so she says, oh, you know, I applied to jobs. I was offered this job, but they need me to start next week. And my current job, they tell me that I have to give them a two month notice. Two months? That's crazy. In America, I think it's a two week notice. Yeah, two weeks. Uh, and somebody can correct me. I haven't been an employee in a long time. But in America, it's a two week notice. She said, well, they asked for two months. I said, well, I'll tell you this. Um, are you more concerned about your past or your future? You concerned about the past or are you concerned about the future? The new job is the future. The new job gives you more money. Why do you care about what these people think at this current job and they're paying you peanuts and you haven't advanced in two years? You have a pathetic job that doesn't give you any transferable skills. Do they like you or love you? No. So why are you showing them favor? Now, tell me this. You stay there for another two months. That means you have to deny this future opportunity, which has better earnings and better skills. Okay, great. So you screw over yourself, but you protect them. Uh, that's dumb. Do they ever protect you and go out of their way to help you? I don't think so. Furthermore, um, them having you do a two-month notice is for their benefit, not yours. Here's here's a bit of comedy. If that corporation was going to go bankrupt, would they give you a two-month notice? Hey, by the way, in two months, we're going bankrupt and we won't be able to pay you. You need to search for a new job. Hell nah. When they figure out they got to go bankrupt, they're going to milk you and then let you know last minute that they're out of work for you. You're not going to get any severance pay because they can't afford it because they're bankrupt and you're not going to get any time to transition. They're just going to milk you to close up their affairs so that the people, the fat cats at the top can get a little bit of money to take home on their way out. Okay, don't be a dummy here. And that just lets me know that this broad didn't love herself. So how could she ever love me? She don't love herself. She could never love me. You hear me? She won't prioritize herself. How's she going to put a boss on a pedestal as he should be, man? Come on now. So anyways, hell yeah, you should go to your boss. But also remember this. What have you been screwing up on that your boss haven't, hasn't looked out for you? Huh? Are you friends with your boss? Do you keep it professional when you're at the job? Or do you discuss personal things and say inappropriate things and use curse words and things like that? Do you reveal too much personal experience or personal information? Huh? These are all critical things that affect the way people view you. When you show up on casual Friday, are you too casual? You heard me? Yeah, it's casual Friday. Yeah, I think I'm going to still stay dressed up. Yeah, on casual Friday, I think I'm going to still be dressed up. That's just me, though. I'm trying to win out here. I'm at work to make money, not to make friends, <laughs> not to make up stories about my weekend. I'm at work to make money, okay? And I don't care what the job is. If I'm a janitor, I'm trying to figure out how I could make extra money as a janitor. You dig? If I'm selling cotton candy, I'm trying to figure out what's my next finesse to maximize the profitability selling cotton candy. That's the kind of guy I am. You know, before I flew out of the country recently, I was um, at one particular uh, resort that I had been invited to. I was having a conversation with some of the employees there because they had recognized me from another place. Oh, hey, Marquette. It was nice to see you. And they used to work somewhere else and they upgraded their, their job opportunity. And they came on to this new resort because this new resort had paid them more money and they came on over as they should. And so we were having a conversation and they were you know, sharing some perspectives on some customers that they or clients that they knew from a different resort. And they say, hey, Marquette, you know, we, we always love when you come in because you're very kind and cordial to everyone. You always tip very well. You're respectful. You remember everyone's name. Like, it's such a pleasure to serve you. They're like, you know, we quit that other place because, you know, the institution, like when the VIPs come in, some of these people are jerks and, and the institution never supports us. I said, oh, okay, you know, well, my perspective is this. When I deal with you guys, you guys help me achieve whatever my goal is when I'm there. So I view you as a partner. That's number one. They say, yeah, you know, and they named a couple individuals who are very wealthy, successful men. And I said, you know what? There's two things. One you're right about and one you're wrong about. I said, number one, that individual you're talking about, yes, he is rude and unpleasant. I get it. However, I've seen him make a request of some of the staff members and they could have done it and they chose not to do it or they chose to backtalk him. And the reality is you're in a tipping business. So if you're in a tipping business, a, a business where most of your income is going to come from your tips, not your base wage, then you need to do whatever the extra is that people ask of you, especially if it's a high net worth person who can give you more tip money. They're like, that's true. I said, OK, cool. There's that. I said, but I'll tell you one thing about that guy that I don't respect. I don't care what anyone's job is. 
mind you, I'm being vague for a reason. I don't care what anyone's job is. That guy comes into your resort and he's rude and he doesn't realize when he's complaining about people for, for nonsense, he's playing with people's livelihood, their ability to make money. When you play with another man's ability to make money and you put people in a position where their job is at risk or where they can be fired just because you want to throw around your weight, you can get yourself killed that way. And, and we, you don't have to be getting someone fired who's a gangster or a criminal. It could be an everyday family man who has an old lady and two kids that he's struggling to put through private school because he doesn't want them in these damn public schools. And you make that man lose his source of income because you bullshitting, trying to feel like you're a big dog. That man mess around and take you out. I've never been fool enough to think that someone has to be a gangster or a criminal or a killer uh, to knock your block off. No, it happens every day. You hear me? Every day, you know, Jim in accounting just lost it. Boom. Took everybody out. And so I pointed that out to them. I said, so there, there's two sides to it. There's number one, you, if you are at, at a particular kind of job, you need to be going the extra mile to figure out how to make more money. I said, for example, if I was a janitor here, you know, if I see someone has like a lot of chips at this particular casino, or I can see someone's in the spa and, you know, they're in a very expensive spa or they're in the more expensive restaurant and I'm a janitor there. Yeah, I'm going to clean up the parts I'm supposed to clean. And then I'm going to come by them and say, oh, hey, sir, is there anything I can get for you or anything I can clean off? Are you enjoying yourself? Oh, great. I'm just a janitor, but I'm about to make them feel like I'm their janitor. You see, I'm going to make them feel like I'm their janitor. I'm there just for them. Because, see, you guys think that the only people who get tips are valet and uh, dealers and waitresses. Those are the typical tipping professions. But if you're a janitor with a little bit of hustle, you can figure out how to get tipped as well. That's my mindset, you see, and that's the kind of things that I teach people if they would only ask, you hear me, you know, if they, you know, in personal conversation, if they would ask, or, you know, if you guys send it in and you want to get some game, that's my general mindset, which is how do I get to this money? I am not at work to have fun. I might have fun while I'm at work. Fantastic. That's great. If I happen to have fun, fantastic. But I never go to work with the top of my to-do list, have fun. The top of my to-do list is make as much money as possible. And if I make $10 an hour, my goal is not to make $10 an hour. It's how do I make $20 an hour? Huh? That's my goal. Anyways, I say that to say this. Uh, this right here, Marcus, read this and get mad at your damn self. Hear me? And then get to work in a real way. Yes, sir. I feel strongly about that. Shout out to Patrick. He writes, Peace of the Saints tuition. Appreciate you. Shout out to the ballers. Brian writes, Peace of the Saints. Appreciate the live. Thank you, sir. May I acknowledge King Tooney writes, Peace of the Saints. Didn't get the notification. Thank you for your time today. Yeah, it gets like that. Uh, shout out to Twano. 2 a.m. writes, Tuition. Just recently got the Master Communicator course. Appreciate you sharing your wisdom. Absolutely. And for those who do have the Master Communicator course, I'm going to do another. We're going to be adding tons more content. So it's going to be way more valuable than it already is. I'm going to add a, a segment on debate tactics. So, you know, what are the best tactics and arguments and debate so that you can triumph? You're going to love it. And I am the best at that. Shout out to Emmanuel writes, Peace of the Saints. Shout out to Vilkin writes, Peace of the Saints. I went outside. This is what I said to myself about life and money. Quote, life isn't hard. It's just hard without money. Eh. I don't indulge in vices like the average human at 23 years old thoughts. I think it's very good not to indulge in vices that will benefit you greatly in an immeasurable level. With regards to life being hard without money, that is not true, meaning it is not true that you don't have money. We all have some money. Some of us might have more or less, but we all have some money. So linguistically, that's not true. Being accurate is important, especially when you're talking to yourself. It's accuracy. It's also known as the truth. So that's number one. Number two, uh, when you say life, is, uh, life isn't hard, it's just hard without money, you have to remember that that is a psychological disposition you are in. There are plenty of people who don't have money and are still perfectly happy and, and, and you know, they're happy, they feel content. I meet these people all the time. I meet them in my travels. I even meet them in America. You know, for example, there are good looking women who could do OF and probably make a pretty penny, but they wouldn't do it. They could make more money, but they wouldn't do it because they're happy enough at the level that they're at. There are women who are broke who could do OF and make a lot of money. I personally know one woman who's a multimillionaire on OF, at, super thick. My Lord, she is thick. She's from Spain. She came to Las Vegas. She initially started as a housekeeper. Yeah, an actual housekeeper. 
And now she makes multiple mi millions on OF. She doesn't do the YouTube circuit, like 304 Lawyer and the girl that I um, interviewed recently. She doesn't do that. She just does her OF. She's turbo thick, good looking enough, and she makes multiple millions. And I know this is to be a fact because I've been to her home. She owns a significant amount of real estate in Las Vegas. Now, she was a housekeeper and she eventually said, look, I'm about to make this move because I need, I feel like I need more money. There are other women who are still a housekeeper and they're completely comfortable and confident being a housekeeper. I remember I was in Miami um, a couple months ago and there was a Cuban woman who's my housekeeper, fine as hell. She was also a super freak too, because I was actually on a video call with a chick at the time. The chick was you're me, giving me a little show on FaceTime and the Cuban housekeeper walks in, I'm butt ass. And it's like, she didn't want to leave. It was like kind of weird. I was like, shorty, like you's a cold freak. You heard me? Like she trying to stay there and peep. You dig? Super freak. But the point is with her level of attractiveness, if she felt like money was a big issue, she could do a lot of things. She could get a sugar daddy. She could have tried to slide on me. She could have did all kinds of things, especially working at a high end hotel. So there are plenty of people who are happy and content at the income level that they're at. So it's always a, a matter of choice. And it's also a matter of how do you, how you react to things. You see, money does help with some things, but it also is going to cause more challenges. Your life, and this will be hard for you guys to understand at this time, you'll understand it perhaps in time. It doesn't have anything to do with how much money you have. It just has to do with your spiritual development. You know, Money is not going to make you any more or less happy. That is the truth. Your mindset and your decisions will make you more or less happy. Money will add convenience to your life. And here's the, the thing that still happens to me. I, I kid you not. And it's been like a decade since I've been very solid financially, a decade, 10 years of this. And I still forget sometimes. <laughs> this is what I mean. Sometimes I'm doing something and I'm like, whoa, that's really expensive. And then I forget, oh, I can, I can afford it. It's fine. <laughs> right. Or I'll be listening to an average person this is the worst thing you can do in the world. Don't listen to average people. They say dumb things. They'll, they'll say, oh, yeah, you know, you should do this or this, but but this is expensive. Or like, oh, you could do this, but do this. It's cheaper. Bro, knock it off. Like they're talking to you like you're in their position. They don't even know what position you're in. Um, like, for example, yesterday I was at a, an airport at a major in, in a, a major city uh, yesterday, and I was sitting next to a guy at a, a restaurant and he didn't have any food. Yeah, I can tell he's a lower class American. And he's describing this airport. He's like, oh, man, and you can go up to this, this fifth level of the airport. And you can look down on everything and observe it. It's so cool. And this is there. And that's cool. And this airport's so advanced. And in my head, I was like, what are you talking about? This airport is trash. Like, you're an idiot. But he's not an idiot. He's inexperienced, right? Maybe this is the first time he'd been out of the country. The airport wasn't impressive at all. In fact, in my opinion, it's one of the less impressive airports I've been to in general, especially considering that we're in a major city that's very wealthy. And the fact of the matter is that him being an average person in his perspective, based on his experience, this was a great airport. But in truth, it's not. So I say that to say this to you all. You know, money will add convenience. It might allow you to get more experience. But at the end of the day, everything we're dealing with is psychological. So who gets to be happier? Me, the guy with money and experience, or the guy who's broke with inexperience? Well, the broke guy with inexperience is looking at the airport like, oh, this is so cool. Oh, and you can go up to that level and look at everything in the airport. And, you know, like he's thrilled to be in a basic airport. He's happier in the moment. I'm not as impressed because I'm like, I've been through a thousand airports and this one ain't shit. Money doesn't make your experience, your psychology. That's precisely why I take every effort to be thankful. I take every effort to be deeply thankful. Gratitude will make you happy, okay? Life being hard or easy, it's all about how you decide to feel about things, okay? Remember that. Like, I remember when I got my first nice car, my first nice car ever. It was a BMW Z4 convertible. Uh, in a nice, like shiny blue color. And it was nice, fast car, small, very zippy, two seater, very player. I was in my early 20s. And you heard me, I used to pull up in that thing in Hollywood and, you know, mostly black folks would be like, oh, you doing it? Like, you know, people respected it because of my age and the expense of the car. And then I started getting pulled over a lot by the police. And I was like, oh, this is weird. I didn't get pulled over very much before this. Well, why? Because I drove a Honda before that. 
So when I was driving a Honda, I didn't get pulled over very much. And I started driving a BMW Z4 as a young man. I started getting pulled over a lot more. I was driving the exact same fashion. So your, your life will be different based on your income. In that case, does more money make you happier? No, it added more jealousy. It added more envy from authorities, added more attention from the authorities. And that's why one thing I want you guys to be clear on, despite all this talk on the internet about money or Marquette's earnings or Marquette's net worth, I pride myself not on how I spend my money. I pride myself on how I give away my money. What are my philanthropic contributions, which I don't talk much about. And I also, you'll, you'll never heard me one time say my net worth is this. I'm worth this many dollars. I have this much money in the bank or on hand or here. I've never made a statement of net worth or anything like that. Because one thing I know very much from my experience in business, especially with people who have way more money, they always taught me there's certain kinds of attention you don't want. And there's certain entities that are watching you, alphabet agencies. You don't want their attention. You do not want to be, you know, you don't want to talk about you got fill in the blank millions of dollars. That is not good because especially if you have cloud or fame or popularity, they want to make an example of you or they want to make sure that you're, they're paying what you, what they think you owe. I do not want their attention. I would much rather be in poverty on paper. Every person who has money, their goal is to be in poverty on paper. Okay. No smart person's like, yeah, I got I got million dollars. I got this car. I have 83 cars. Like, hell nah. You hear me? Hell nah. That's a bad look. That's not wise. The, there is merit to being quiet. Speak facts, right? Pieces of saints. I'm almost finished with the black box. Great book. How do I boost my confidence in life? You should take Boston University and then you should take the Master Communicator course. Boston University will give you true confidence. It will help you Learn and do the activities that give you true confidence. Then the Master Communicator course will teach you how to communicate, how to express, and how to convey confidence to the outside world. You see, sometimes you can convey and express it even if you don't have it. People can behave confidently even if they're not confident. Boss University will give you the tools to make you really confident, certain of yourself, and understand other people as well. Master Communicator course teaches you how to convey that confidence. Casual germ right? Peace is saying, as a business owner, I've noticed myself getting too comfortable and talking too much about my past personal experiences to my employees. Bruh, tighten up, tighten up. Thank you for this stream. It's a wake-up call. Yes, exactly. And that's why I do these streams. And that's why I review Boston University because it's a wake-up call. It is a wake-up call because good information bears repeating. And it takes time to soak into your brain. And even after it soaks in, you still need a reminder. Shout out to EJ. He writes tuition, peace of the saints in a real way. Shout out to the real ones. May I acknowledge Ken? He writes tuition, hitting good rope whilst listening. Indeed. May I also acknowledge Jose. He writes great topic. Shout out to Cole. He writes peace of the saints. May I acknowledge Nick. He writes peace of the saints. Tuition, assassin or nothing. I actually got assassin or nothing T-shirt on. You did. You ain't even know it. You ain't even know it. Assassin or nothing. S A S N brand.com. Log in. Boss up. May I acknowledge Zane. He writes question in the chat under Isaiah LeBron. If you would be kind enough to just send your question to the email below. I will address it. So just please uh, send that question there. May I acknowledge Elliot, who just got the black box on ebook? Let me continue on with this lecture. Simplify life. This is the most important piece of advice I can give you because simplifying life helps you get to success faster. It also helps you maintain happiness. Yes. A simple life is a happy life. I promise you, you know, it saddens me when I see some things on the internet. For example, um, when I hear a certain influencer say, I got 69 cars or I hear rappers like this is my car collection. I'm like, ah, that's sometimes when you have too many possessions, they begin to possess you. Sometimes when you own too many things, they begin to own you. I got three cars. I got four cars right now. I got four cars right now. Do you know what it feels like? Because you guys know I travel a lot, right? So I got four cars. When I leave the country, I got um, over a million dollars in cars sitting. No one's driving them. I leave the country. I have a million dollars in cars sitting. No one's driving them. One of the cars is paid off. All the other cars, we got probably about $10,000 in notes. So we got $10,000 in notes, car notes, damn near $10,000. 
every month in cars that are not being driven. When I leave the country, I got a storefront that's expensive because it's in Vegas. Huh? I got a five bedroom house that's expensive because it's in Vegas and it's large. Empty. Got $20,000 in bills. $20,000 in bills for things I'm not using at all for months on end. $20,000 in bills for things I'm not using at all for months on end. That's stupid, okay? It would only be stupider. Is that a word? It'd only be more foolish if I multiplied that. I got four cars. Now, imagine if I had 30 cars or 40 cars. Imagine if I went and got a mansion, right? It's an empty mansion. My house is too big for me because I'm one man with no kids. But if I had a mansion, it'd be even more foolish. I know that my greatest joy is travel. So I would simplify my life. The reason I didn't get a mansion, I could afford a bigger house. I have a five bedroom house, which is much bigger than I need. But I have a modest house considering my income because I'm never home. You see, I have four cars which is more than I need. And frankly, I don't recommend more than two cars for anyone. Some of them are collector's items, but I have four cars and it's more an inconvenience. If I could do it over again, I'd probably limit myself to two cars. The point is this, those things own me at some level. And if I didn't didn't buy under my uh, economic performance level, I'd be in trouble. See, the thing with me, being that I have a modest amount of cars considering my earnings, if things go left and I don't earn well for a couple months or even six months, I'm good because I could have 40 cars, but I only have four. So I can survive until the economy rebounds. I could survive until my businesses rebound. But still, even though I've purchased way less than I can afford, I know that I'm owned by the these objects at some level. And here's the thing. Do you know what it feels like I changed getting to one car, start driving it, sensor goes on. Oh, got to put more air in my tires. Why? Because the car been sitting so long and the weather's cold, the, the tire needs to be inflated. Great. Drive it for a little bit, take it back. Okay, a couple of days later, I got some friends coming in town. I'm going to go pick them up from the airport. I need my car with the big trunk. So I get in my truck, drive my truck. Oh, sensor goes on. Got to put some air in the tires. Same story. It's cold. Haven't driven in a long time. Okay, cool. Driving for a little bit. Okay, I got a little bitty coming in town. I want to floss on her. I'm going to hop in the car with the doors and the drop the top. Hop in that one. Cool. Driving a little bit. Sensor goes on. Oil change. God damn it. Now I'm spending a lot of my time. I got to do oil changes for four cars. I got to do tire inflation for four cars. I got to do all these things for all these different cars. It's inconvenient. It does not help your life. It does not improve your life to have four cars. Okay. The only thing that's minorly cool is when you drive up to the valet at a place that you frequent, they're like, oh, you, cho- you chose this car. Okay, you feel cool now? You feel cool? You floss on the valet. They know you got a bunch of cars. Cool, buddy. Cool. No, that's not good. Money makes people sick, okay? Money can make you sick. I feel like I've maintained very well in living a modest life. I don't want anyone out here thinking that you're going to be happier when you get money. Life's going to be better when you get money. That's not true. And here's another fun fact. For the last 10 years, I've been traveling like a madman. My good friends, hey, bro, let's go here. Let's go there. Oh, man, I got to work. I'm talking about bosses. You heard me? I'm talking about CEOs. Yeah, they they have a company that's heavy. They got 60 employees. They can't leave the office for a month to go hang out with the big homie. Or I got friends who got regular jobs. Hey, bro, let's go move over here, man. Tickets, I got it. Ticket hotel, it's on me. No problem. My gift to you. We grew up together. I love you, man, like a brother. Oh, man, I got to ask for time off. What you mean? Oh, I got to ask. the. I got to request time off. Oh, okay, cool. So what you figure out is that your rich friends can't afford to go because they have companies that are not simple. They have heavy businesses with a lot of employees and they've not figured out how to create systems that allow them to remove themselves from the business system. So they're wealthy. They got money, but they don't have time. Then you got people who got time, but they don't have money. You got friends. They might have time. They might be unemployed, but they're broke. They can't pay their own way. Or you got friends that you love. They got a, a nine to five gig, but they got to request time off or they got a wife and kids and you know they can't go make that move with you. So at some level, it's isolating. You see what I'm saying? 
So don't ever think that money is going to make you happier. You are going to make you happier when you get knowledge. It's, it's knowledge and the practice of good knowledge that will empower you to be persistently happy. I could go on and on with that, but I won't. I won't belabor that point. Shout out to EJ supporting the work by PayPal. Appreciate you. May I acknowledge uh, Christopher? He writes, getting this ism while at work. Timestamps. Right, exactly. And it'd be, you know, maybe one day we will get timestamps, but it's low priority because remember, there's only so many things you can do. And so as a man, you should be asking yourself, well, what, what's going to pay me? What's going to give me the most joy? These are the two things you should be asking yourself. Timestamps is going to do none of the above. <laughs> you, you did? May I acknowledge... Looks like someone just got Boston University. Shout out to Akil, got Boston University. And true to my word, I will schedule a, a live session for all the students who have Boston University. We're just going to go through and just reflect on some of those lessons. You heard me? We're going to reflect on some of those lessons. And I'm doing it because it's a benefit to me. You heard me? I think Boston University is that good to where I go back through it because it refreshes me with good knowledge. You dig? Um, so if you get Boston University before I list that live session, you can join in on that. If you already have Boston University, you can, of course, join in on that. So what I'm telling you guys, if you're picking up what I'm putting down is that a simple life is a better life. Rather than have four cars, I'd rather have two cars. Honestly, I would. I'd rather have two cars than four cars. True, true story. Um, and, you know, funny thing is one of my cars, I told my assistant to sell one of my cars and she was telling me about some of the conversations that people were having. And I had to chuckle recently. This is funny. I'll share this with you guys because it just tells you about the nature of people. Um, one of the cars I think she put on Facebook Marketplace and a guy had messaged her and he said, hey, um, why is this car so expensive? <laughs> and then she says, because that's the market value of this car. Then he says, no, it's not. It should be closer to this price. And she says, no. No, nah, it should be the price that we listed it at. And we're not we're not budging on the price. It's not negotiable, which is a good position to be in. Like, I don't have to sell the car, so it's not negotiable. And so and, and another reason, just side note, you're like, well, why are you selling any of your cars? Because some of the places that I'm buying property in other countries, if you import a car, they charge 100% tax. So if you import, import a car that's $200,000, you have to pay $400,000 just to bring your car in. So you'd be wiser to just buy a car in that country. Uh, that's why. Also, there's a nice car called a Bufori, which you can only get in certain markets. And so I, I'd like to have that car. It's just illegal to have that car in America. Anyways, um, that being the case, so this dumb idiot is, boy, let's, I'm sorry about the vitriol, but but this dimwit is arguing with my assistant. She's recounting the story. She's like, you know, what, Marquette, she was like, you know, I, I, was, I was in a bad mood. So, you know, I kind of let him have it. And she's like, so he sent me like an example of a car of the similar car uh, at a lower price. And I said, yeah, but this car has this car that I'm selling doesn't have miles on it. It has less than this number of miles and it's within the last three years. So that's why. And then he messages her and says, you know, some expletives and she messages him back. She's recounting the story to me. She messages him back and she says, I'm sorry, you can't afford your dream car. That's not my problem. Damn. You ain't have to hurt him like that. Now, if it was me, as soon as he sent the first message, which is why is this car so expensive? Block. Straight up, block. These are exotic cars. These are luxury cars. Like anyone who's talking about expensive can't afford it. You, you know, it's not about expense. When you're buying an exotic car, a luxury car, you're buying it because it's expensive. You're not, there's no such thing as it's expensive. That's why you're getting it because it's expensive. You don't want no one else to have it. You want a floss. That's what, come on now. No one buys an exotic car to race the car. You no, know, we're not racing cars. We're flossing on these hoes. I buy a fast car just to drive slow. You dig? Let these hoes get a good look at it. But, you know, my assistant, uh, I guess she was in a mood and, you know, this guy was a jerk. And she said that he, she said, I'm sorry, you can't afford your dream car. But it teaches you a lot about the mindset of certain persons, which is to say this individual was getting mad at her because of his bank account. You heard me? He's taking it out on her because his bank account ain't where he wants it. That lets you know he's not a real man and he's not a manly person. A man lives in reality. He deals with the facts. Whether we put the car 30,000 above market value or at market value, it is what it is. You would never walk into Walmart and complain about the price of a Snickers. You accept it for what it is. You know, he's a crybaby and that's why he's broke. 
if he wasn't a crybaby, he probably wouldn't be broke because he'd deal with the realities of the world and he'd figure out how to get on the correct side of the dynamic. Huh? There you go. He writes, my apologies, saying, where do I find the live session for Boss U? The live session has not been listed yet. Uh, as a student of Boss University, I will list the live session within Boss University with the title, you know, hey, you know, Boss University live session. And then I will also uh, post everywhere uh, noting that we're going to have it. So it'll be very clear. You have no problem uh, finding it. I promise you. Carrying on. And shout out to the, the folks who have that, who have access to that course. When you buy my courses, you have access to them for all time. If we ever improve a lesson, we re-record a lesson, we do a live session for that lesson, you have access for all time. Shout out to Andrew, sends in support by Cash App. May also acknowledge Akil. Okay, got you, Akil. I got your email right here. We'll take care of you. May I also acknowledge Aaron. He writes, peace and saints, tuition and appreciation for the education. This man's rhyming over here. Isaiah sent in his question with his uh, cash up. He writes, how do I manage my girlfriend's expectations on no income coming for now since I started a new business and made some investments? There's not much to manage. You just tell her what it is. It's the truth of the matter. The truth is a beautiful thing, which is, hey, I started a business. My money's going to be tied up. And in fact, I might need some of your money. That's the truth of the matter. If she can't rock with that, you hear me? <laughs> she can get ghostly. You dig? That's just what it is. And if she ain't riding with you on that, that lets you know everything you need to know. The beautiful thing about a woman who's going to deal with you on your come up, you can trust her. Yeah, I don't trust nothing. In general, I don't trust anything. But there are certain women that I can trust greatly because they've dealt with me through the different stages that I've gone through. And Lord knows I've gone through stages. You hear me? I've dealt with women who caught me when I was balling. And, you know, I, I made some major investments in certain businesses. The businesses crash. And next thing you know, I'm not balling. You hear me? Yeah, week to week. <laughs> Last week I was balling. This week I'm not. You dig? I've met women who, you know, they meet me and they know that I got a bunch of money and I'm investing in all of my business. There's no dates, no nothing. Yeah, I could spend $100 on you or on a date, but I'd rather put in my business. I'd rather do that. And they rock with you or they don't rock with you. You dig? That's just all there is to it. You hear me? Because at the end of the day, she matters not. <laughs> she matters not. Only thing that matters is this goal. A man pursues a goal. A woman pursues a man. Are you the man she wants? If not, yeah, let her get ghostly, man. <laughs> let her die. You dig? Yeah. Yeah, there ain't nothing to explain. Hey, I'm pursuing this goal. It, it requires all of my money and it might require yours. So get ready. That's all there is to it. And if she ain't trying to live and die by that, let her die. Yeah, that's not even a consideration. Shit. See, see, the problem is cats are whining and dining these hoes too much. You hear me? Cats are, you know, living in the wrong way. Chicks think they need to go out every weekend. They don't know how to sit at home sometimes. I like a woman who's an introvert. Huh? Yeah, I had one old lady. Uh, all she'd like to do is stay at the house. She Every now and then she'd go out, go to the spa, go get her nails done, go get all these things. I, I don't understand what it is. Dermaplaning and all this maintenance stuff. I don't even know what the hell it is. And I ain't paying for none of it. You dig? So she'll go out for upkeep things that women do, especially upper class women who have money, do all this stuff. And I think white women have some extra things they go do. You hear me? They be having extra stuff. You don't even understand what the hell they're going to do. Uh, but she'd go out for maintenance-oriented things. But other than that, she's at the house. And it's good because she's there for my beck and call. You know, she's there for when I need something. And um, other than that, you know, we go travel around the world. That's when she enjoys her time out of the house. But beyond that, she spends her time out of the house grocery shopping for me and running my errands doing my business tasks and then doing her spa and maintenance. And every now and then she'll be like, Hey, so-and-so like her girlfriend wants to go have lunch or have dinner. Great. And every time she goes, she says, Hey, but if you need anything, call me. If you need me to come back early, call me. If you don't want me to go, let me know. I'm always a priority. If her friends invite her to dinner and I don't, and I need her for something, she'll be like, I'll stay. Now me, I'm not a tyrant. Yeah. Go hang out with your friends. Like I'll, you can do whatever I need you to do afterward. Because she never goes out. You hear me? I'm damn near happy when she goes somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'd be trying to send her off. Like, hey, go visit your family. <laughs> Does your family live in the Midwest? Here, let me get you a ticket. Go visit them. Because she's always home. Yeah, that's how a woman should be. But all that, uh, like, let's go out to eat and let's go do this. Listen, let me tell you guys something. This is another thing about money. This is how we know money will not make you happy. I promise you. It will poison a lot of things. Um, When you live at a high level, 
you will become desensitized and the woman will become desensitized to that lifestyle. For example, if I go out to eat in Vegas, I dine in. Everywhere I dine in is five-star restaurants, Michelin restaurants. You hear me? We're talking about, uh, did I say five stars? Do restaurants even go up to five stars? I think they're four stars. But they're Michelin restaurants, you know, celebrity chefs type stuff, right? You know, we're talking about four four, four $500 uh, tabs, no alcohol, just the food. You hear me? And I don't even order appetizers because it's too much uh, too much uh, food. It's not necessary. It's the way the restaurants attempt to scam you. Appetizer, get this, then get the dessert. Nah, entree is going to be more than enough food for two normal uh, adults. Anyways, anytime I eat in Vegas, we're eating at the top restaurants every time. So I remember one time I was talking to one of my females and she said to me, she says, oh, you haven't taken me out and you know, in a while and blah, blah. And I was like, wait, hold on. Why do you say that? She's like, cause you took out so-and-so, but you haven't taken me out in a while. I was like, oh, is that true though? She was like, yeah. I was like, no, 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 no. Last Thursday we went here. And then last Monday we went here. She was like, yeah, but no, what's the, but that's a $400 check. What's the, but that's a nice restaurant. That's a restaurant people go to on their anniversary on their honeymoon on their wedding day like that's a restaurant people go to once a year what do you mean but ah what i figured out is the but is that there was no ceremony you see because for us it's every day i show up to a, a restaurant spend 500 dollars on the check wearing a beanie and a t-shirt you dig everybody else in there in suits i'm in a beanie and a t-shirt because i do it so frequently you know I, I walk in there they recognize me i don't have to be dressed up for her all that matters. It doesn't feel like a date. You didn't get dressed up. You didn't like make it a surprise and you, it wasn't a new restaurant. You you see what I'm saying? Whereas if I was a broke guy and I took her to the same restaurant, I'd be like, oh my God, oh my God, this is so nice. Well, she didn't been to restaurants like that every damn week for the last month. So she's desensitized. You ain't dressed up. You got to make it an experience. You have to present it. You see, because they get desensitized so quickly. So it, you create your own problems living with a certain level of wealth. You know, the women get desensitized. They start thinking that you can buy your way out, out of every issue. You know, they, they start thinking that they don't have to look at receipts to make sure that the bill is correct because you got it like that. It messes everything up in the head, man. You got to starve them a little bit. You got to starve all of them. Make them appreciative. That's why I continue to be thrifty. Like you're never going to see me in first class. I don't actually, I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to lie, but you're rarely going to see me flying first class. Number one, because it's not a better experience. Like if you fly, uh, fly premium economy, your business class, you can't lift up the armrest, which I like to be able to lift up the armrest. So that's one reason you can't even lift up the damn armrest because they got those big things separating you. So if I'm with my old lady, I can't even lift up the armrest because I could take some of her space. She a small female. You heard me? Then if you're in business class, they got you in these like, or excuse me, if you're in first class, they got you in these pods, which are actually not quite comfortable because there's like so much stuff built around it, which the airline thinks that's luxury. No, that's inconvenience. You got all this, the stuff up around me. I feel like I'm in a little ass building or something. It's not, com it's not more comfortable. And ironically, I kid you not, in United Airlines, their first class pods don't have as much leg room as their premium economy. True story. I know. I've been in both of them flying across the world. Furthermore, the thing for me is who am I around? So would I rather spend $5,000 on a first class flight? Or would I rather get together like eight of my homies and we each throw in 7000 or 8000 We get a private jet and we go somewhere that we like to be, right? I'd rather do that. So no, you're not going to see me wasting money in first class. That's not, I'm, I'm not into wasting money just to look a certain way. You might see me in business class. You might see me in coach class. I'm into being thrifty and economical no matter what my income is because I believe in the values. I want those around me to subscribe to those values, whether it's my assistant, whether it's my girlfriend, whether it's my mother, uh, children, Anyone, I want them to observe me living a thrifty life. I believe in thrift. Now, granted, there's some things that I'll spend on because I value that particular thing. But keep using your head and don't let money poison you. Huh? May I acknowledge uh, Chad supporting the work? He writes, and I'm going to read this one. I don't know if this is his first one on here or not, but I see that he's coming a lot um, with... Uh, super thanks on the comments of the video. So even though this one is not 15, I want to read this one and honor him. Chad writes, hey, Marquette, I work 60 hours a week, machine operator, 40K per year, want to start college for electrical engineering. 
Is it possible to get the degree online? I was told it's too tough online. Your thoughts? Is it possible? Well, it sounds like it's possible. I think you're maybe asking, is it too hard? Well, nothing's too hard to someone who's determined, but you should really ask yourself, is it the best thing for you? Generally, and you guys might not know, but I'm actually an expert in terms of college success, college retention rates. Like that's that's the business I was in, driving student success at the higher education level. Online education is far more difficult than in-person education. There's no doubt about that. Secondly, you're going to master the material better. You're going to make met better connections and networking if you ever need a letter of recommendation. If you've actually met the professor, that helps. So I always preference in-person education. It's also more fun. The truth is online education removes all the good aspects of college, networking, fun, social interaction, parties, uh, relationships, things like that. So I always prefer in-person education if it's an option. So I would recommend that to you if it is a reasonable option given your, your existing, your current life. Dominique writes, I perceive you to be a living legend. Keep doing your thing, man. I appreciate you. And shout out to the real ones who really know. Shout out to uh, Minhance supporting the work. Appreciate you. Now, so acknowledge Othello. He writes, Mr. Burton, good to see you again. I just finished watching you on No Fugazi. The points you explained were a masterclass on the current black culture. A blessed mind here, fellas. Drink deeply of this wisdom. Peace of the saints. I appreciate you. Listen, they don't know, man. Some of them don't know. <laughs> Some of them really don't know. May I acknowledge uh, Joseph, right? Peace of the saints. Greatly appreciate this game. Thank you, sir. Shout out to Joseph supporting it as well via Cash App. Juan writes, uh, Peace of the saints giving some tuition owed. Uh, it's been a while. Sorry about that. I let a homie borrow the black box and he also likes it. Very good. Got to spread the ism out here in a real way. Do you think that being too honest is a bad thing? Yes. Uh, you haven't taken Boss University. There's an entire lesson on the truth. Take it. <laughs> For real, though. I have a couple of friends who are mad because I hit them with the truth on occasion. Yeah, well, shit, that makes sense. Uh, most people can't handle the truth. In fact, since you brought up the truth, let me give you guys a short story then on the truth. This is a true story. And, and it's, a, it's a bit of a sad story, really. <laughs> but it's a true story. I was dealing with a young lady. This is a true story. It's funny, but it's sad. I was dealing with a young lady and I told her the truth. And I think I'll probably do some, some content to follow this up. But I told her the truth, this young lady. I said, hey, we're going to fly here to this country. We're going to spend some time. You may or may not continue with me to the next country. I might send you back and I might continue on with my journey. Which, of course, invariably involves you know, me meeting some beautiful women in a different country. You know, I got, you know, some people say they got chicks in different area codes. I got chicks in different country codes. You heard me? So, you know, I might have some chicks in different countries I want to visit. So I'll send you back and uh, I'll carry on with my trip. She says, OK. I was like, all right, cool. So we leave. We go to this particular country. We're having a good time. I'm handling my business affairs and we're engaging in some social affairs as well. And then um, I decide that I'm ready to move on to the next country. And I said, hey, I'm going to send you back tomorrow. And she says, OK, but becomes angry and pouty and even disrespectful. Now, here's the thing for me. When you've taken so much time and effort to become a man of respect and you have a lot of self-respect because you've been through the fire, and you've come out on the other side intact, you see, you deserve your respect. And me, I was raised to, to live for and die about respect. Respect is everything to me. In fact, I don't even care about love. You heard me, yeah, you ain't gotta love me, but you must respect me. You see, love, those are feelings. Love is unpredictable, unreliable, it's emotional. A woman might love you and yell at you. A woman, a woman might love at you and cuss you out. A, a woman might love, at, love you and slice your tires. Hell, a woman might love you and even try to kill you. We saw this recently on a podcast that I was on. A woman was pregnant with a guy's baby and shot him. You hear me? Love. You see, but respect, respect is going to dictate how you speak to me. Respect is going to dictate, you know, the way you engage me. You engage me with respect. So I'll take my respect over love any time, any day. So I told the young lady, hey, you're, you're going back. I'm about to move on to the next country, which to her translates to you're about to go deal with another woman, which is a fact. And women who love you, they, they tend to get jealous. It's OK. And she says um, a whole bunch of stuff. And, you know, women will often confer, compare themselves to other women. Right. They, they think, you know, that their comparisons are valid. They're not. You could be a dime 
and the other woman I'm going to see is an eight. You could be a 10 and she's an eight. This, you comparing yourself to her is irrelevant because if you're a 10 and she's an eight, that doesn't mean that she doesn't also have value to me. She might have value to me because she knows how to shut up when you know how, when you keep talking. You hear me? She might have value to me because she's easygoing. She might have value to me because she's more productive. She might have value to me because she has some business contacts that she's going to provide me when I touch down in that country. She might have value to me because of a, a multitude of things. But it doesn't matter because I don't have to explain anything to you. I told you you're gonna you're done here. You're going home, and I'm going on to the next country. And if you were a more easygoing woman, I'll bring you with me and the three of us would hang out, but you're not an easygoing woman, so you're going home. So she goes nuts and uh, starts saying some things that were quite disrespectful. And in fact, so disrespectful that I honestly, in a righteous land, she would have to taste that pee hand. You know, you heard me? In a righteous land, she would have to see what that pee hand do. But we're not in a righteous land. We're not in a righteous world. So I told her, I said, you know what? Uh, you deserve a pee hand right now. And I'm not going to give you one, but I will give you a first class flight up out of here. It wasn't first class, but you get the point. And the sad thing is that I told her the truth. And what we learned there is that the truth uh, is not valued. You see, a lie would have went over much better or silence. You see me, I don't like to lie. So it's truth or silence. You tell them the truth or you say you're not worthy of the truth or you can't handle the truth. Then you just hit them with a silence, meaning no information. You're on a need to know basis. You don't need to know a damn thing. So yeah, the truth, take Boston University. There's an entire lesson on the truth. If you don't know how to deal with the truth, you're going to suffer greatly. And I also want you guys to know it is very immature to not know how to deal with the truth. Magnage Othello, he writes, by the way, sir, last you visited us Valentine's Day, there were immediately women that asked who you were and men asking how I know you. Uh, hilarious reactions, priceless. Okay. Um, damn, where was I Valentine's Day? Because I don't celebrate Valentine's Day, so I'll be forgetting what the hell I was doing. You know, actually, I did see, uh, I did see one of my young ladies on Valentine's Day just actually by chance. Um, yeah, I saw her by chance because, oh, actually, I, know, I think I know where we at. Yeah, I appreciate you. And it's love. Every time I see you, it's love. I appreciate that in a real way. Yeah, I did pull up to one particular resort on Valentine's Day with a nice young lady, very easygoing. That's one thing I, I value about her is that she's very easygoing. Her libido, her sex drive is far too high for my liking. You hear me? Because I'm, I'm not like really a, a big sex freak like that. You, I'm not saying she's a freak, but she just has high sex drive. And, you know, she's a faithful woman. You know, they hold it all in till they see you. Shout out to the faithful women. You hear me? They hold it. They have it pent up till they see you. Then they just unleash it. God damn it. It'd be too much. Um, but shout out to the real ones. He writes, um, there were immediately women that asked who you were and men asking how I know you. That's a beautiful thing. And, and you know, tell me you're part of this thing of ours, man. Yes, indeed. You connected to this. By the way, I think this is a baller alert. Shout out to Jundle. He writes, peace to the saints. Always grateful for the ism. I appreciate you. Shout out to the real ones. And shout out to the real ones who are loyal around the world. Anytime I pull up in people's country, I didn't have a chance to link up with Jundle. But, you know, uh, God willing, one day we'll have an opportunity to link up, whether it's in his country or in mine. But anytime I pull up to people's country and they've been rocking with the ism for a long time, always, if I have a moment, you know, take out some time to, uh, you know, build in person because... There's nothing more valuable than real relationships, in-person relationships. And one thing you guys have to remember is that that's what this life is about. That's the true root of happiness, the, the good people that you're around. Magnage Ricky, he writes, showing love to Mr. Love's grandson. Appreciate you. Shout out to the real ones. Ricky been rocking with us for a long time. Now, so acknowledge Miles. He writes, peace to the saints. I have a few questions regarding incentives and how powerful they can influence behavior in business. What is the easiest way to identify incentives so you don't get exploited? Well, an incentive is basically suggesting that if you do this, you get this. It's a reward system. Now, if you like the rewards, then go ahead and participate. One thing I want to warn you guys about is that generally these things are scams. <laughs> and we all get bought into the scams at some level sometimes. For example... I cannot tell you how many credit card offers I get. Man, I get credit card offers like every single day from every credit card institution. And I don't have credit. I don't use credit cards. I don't have credit cards. I don't use credit cards. In fact, you know, there's some truth to I don't have credit. I did 
one time I was making a, I was getting a, a loan for an automobile. This was quite funny. One of the credit bureaus uh, came back saying that they didn't have a credit score for me because I don't utilize credit enough, right? So I, because I'm not taking any loans or any debts in my personal name under my social security card or social security number that they don't have enough data to, to identify my credit score. That was quite funny. Um, and that's the peculiar nature of the financial system, which is largely scamalicious, uh, that they would say they can't assess my credit worthiness or credit risk because I don't use credit. Now, mind you, they don't take into account if you have money, if you're wealthy, if you have cash liquidity, they don't take none of that into account. They take into account how you've behaved with debt. So that's number one. Why do I mention credit cards? Because he's talking about uh, incentives. Credit cards will say, oh, we'll give you frequent flyer Myers if you get our credit card. We'll give you cash back if you get our credit card. You have to know that the money you're investing with them through the credit card is benefiting them more than what they give you in terms of frequent flyer miles or incentives or cash back. So if you're giving them more value than they're giving you back, you could have obviously given yourself that value the interest that you're paying on your credit card is going to dwarf what they give you in cash back or what they give you in frequent flyer miles. So you'd be better just paying for those things directly. What's another incentive program that's a scam? If you look in Las Vegas, the casinos, they will offer you free things if you go and gamble, right? Especially if you gamble a lot of money or if you gamble on slots or if you gamble, I don't know, I think slots and if you gamble a lot of money is my guess. I don't like to get involved in this nonsense because it's a scam. Why do they give you a lot of uh, incentives if you gamble on slots? Because slots are predetermined that you're going to lose. When I say you, I'm talking about the public. You see, because it's a machine that runs on an algorithm, the slot will never lose money for the casino. So as long as they can keep people on those slots, they're going to make money every time. A slot machine is predetermined. Okay, we're going to take in $80,000. We're going to give out $23,000. So yeah, you as an individual, you might have won, but all in all, the slot machine is on the green side every single time. Conversely, a blackjack table, Baccarat, and all these other games, they could, technically, it's possible they could lose money for the casino. It won't happen, but it's possible. Um, so anyways, if you play slots, you're going to get better rewards from the casino. What does the casino give you as a reward? I don't know, free dinners, trinkets, uh, like uh, cookware. I, I think they give out like random gifts. I don't know. This stuff is nonsense. I wouldn't participate in it. It's silliness. So those are incentives that are used to influence your behavior and it works. Here's another incentive. Free things that are not really free. Buy one, get or buy one, get one free type things. Well, it wasn't free because you had to buy one. These are the things you should be aware of. Nothing is free. Free should scare you. Free should make you suspicious. I don't like free. I like to pay for what I want. Also, what I say to you guys all the time, pay what you owe. Pay what you owe. Free is always a setup. It's always a scam. Acknowledge Eric, he writes, you are the truth. Great meeting you last Sunday. It was a, excuse me, last Friday. It was my pleasure as well. Shout out to Eric. Shout out to the, the saints, Jeremy, who had the pleasure of coming through the Assassin headquarters. Um, he was there at Assassin headquarters uh, just last Friday, and it was a pleasure to meet. You know, we always make an effort to show love to those who show love to us. The saying on PayPal further writes, are incentives always accurate when it comes to predicting the behavior of a person, business, or institution? Um, generally, yeah, in developed systems, yeah, incentives have been created based on mass psychology of their customer base. He writes, in your experience, are people easily fooled by complexity? Hell, people are fooled by complexity. They, they're fooled by simplicity. They're fooled by themselves. You never fooled yourself. You meet a girl. She's showing you red flags, but you feel you still think she can be a good person. I see all the times when I'll interview some woman who's a dumb dingbat broad, you'll see some imbecile in the comment will say, oh, yeah, but, you know, if you give her a little bit of game, she's going to act right. No, no, she's not. No, she's not. You're lying to yourself. You want that to be true because she appeals to your eye. You're looking at her. She's a beautiful woman, a sexually appealing woman. You want her and desire her. So you also desire that she would be a good person or be a person who likes you. None of the above are true. You fool yourself. Fooling people is easy. Are you kidding me? I mean, half the internet has you guys fooled, right? You got fools fooling fools on the internet. I mean, dig this. For example, recently we had um, the OnlyFans 304s on, right? And one of them says, you ran a scam. Okay, fantastic. Tell us what it is. We, we would like to hear it. She can't explain it because she's lying, trying to fool people. So 
One, she's lying about who I am, but then let's turn it back. I never turned it back on her. You say you're the 304 lawyer. Where'd you practice law at? Won't tell us. Where'd you go to law school? Won't tell us. Okay, cool. Where were you born? Won't tell us. Turns out people did the research. She's a foreigner, was not born here. Neither of those girls were born here. They're both immigrants to America. Neither were born in America. Neither of them have uh, advanced degrees in America. The one girl does, but she was a foreigner. Um, the one that claims to be a lawyer does not have any university degrees in America, has never practiced law at all at any level. And we don't even know her true name. And the reason she's not been exposed before is because no one in America went to high school or college with her. She came from outside of the country. And that's why she's kind of like Zerka. She's a nobody and came in here using a bunch of marketing. Right. So the truth is she's a fraudster, doesn't use her real name. Nobody knows her. This is what we're dealing with. He writes, meaning, do some professionals make things sound more complex than they actually are? Absolutely. There are times you go uh, and get something done by a mechanic and they make it seem like they're doing more than they're really doing. And you don't know because you don't have their skill set. And that's why knowledge can be valuable and lack of knowledge can be expensive. And that's why you just got to pay specialists. Sometimes you have to bite the bullet. And other times you know that you're getting screwed over. So yes, absolutely. Specialists will certainly make things seem more complex to increase the price. There's no doubt about that. He writes, um, they conveyed to the consumer that he or she knows something they don't, which entices the consumer to pay the assumed person because they're smarter or more knowledgeable. Yeah, that's correct. That's the nature of life. Irvin writes, has a Vietnam... Uh, I received the visa email, got my flight book and visa approved. Very good. Absolutely. You will be receiving an updated email. Um, it'll be closer to the trip. Um, I don't know if you have, yeah, it'll be closer to the trip. We're still allocating people to different uh, locations, different rooms. So you're going to receive a very far reaching email that'll say, hey, you're at this address in this room. So we'll need a little bit of time for that. But you're straight, you're set, you'll be all taken care of. Have no fear. Have no fear. And remember, the information is not needed until you're actually about to get there. I understand you'd like to anticipate, but we will get you the information before it is needed. I promise you that. Have no worries. Turns out there's a lot of logistics in this thing. Carrying on. And thank you to those who have uh, sent in supporting the work. You are appreciated. Simplify your life. Here's a, a great tip. What if you could act on all of the correct and good things you already know instead of trying to, well, let me address that, that part first. What I'm telling you is that you watching me right now, you already know the right way. In many ways, you have all the knowledge of the world. In many ways, you know all of what is good and what is bad. The challenge is not being aware of what is good and bad. The challenge is executing on what is good and bad, what is right and wrong on a regular basis. You ever heard someone say, oh, man, I got drunk. Oh, man, I'm never going to do this again, right? They knew before they got drunk, they'd have a hangover. Then they lied and said they never do it again, and then they did it again. The next weekend. You already know much of what is good and bad, what is right and wrong. If you could actually get yourself to abide by the good knowledge that you have, you would simplify your life and you would advance greatly. It is a matter of discipline. That is your issue, the issue of discipline. You delude yourself and believe that you must constantly be on the pursuit of new knowledge, new good information, new correct information. No. I challenge, you must only do what is right that you already know is right. In some cases, there are things you do not know. For example, the master communicator course, you guys are not master communicators for the most part. There's a lot of things you don't know that you would have to get through experience that I've got through experience that you probably won't ever be able to get. So yeah, you have to get that. That's new knowledge. But most of what you're dealing with in terms of the things that are adversely affecting your life, you already know the right answer. But will you do it? That's precisely why one of my great efforts is to put you among one another in real life on the ground. Why? Because birds of a feather flock together. You're around honorable, upright men. You're going to do the right things. You're around men who are not honorable, not upright. You're going to do the wrong things. Okay. You will be influenced. Let me give you guys a real life example. And I first want to say that I do pray for, um, I pray for uh, Fresh. I pray for Myron. I pray for the Tates because I want to see all these men who are in good positions 
continue to succeed and be happy, but most importantly, spread goodness, okay? I was, uh, uh, not even recently, maybe two weeks ago, if I'm remembering correctly, I saw uh, Fresh and Fit on with the Tates and I saw them smoking cigars, uh, uh, Fresh and uh, Myron. I don't know, I, I'm pretty sure they were smoking. I saw them definitely holding it. I didn't watch long enough, but they were holding cigars. So presumably they were smoking cigars. If I'm in error, someone please do correct me. But when I saw that, I, I cut it off and you know I was going to make salah, I was going to make prayer. And I made sure that I made a do after them. I made a prayer for those brothers that they would stay pure and stay away from vices and bad things. Because sometimes people make things look good that are not good. Smoking a cigarette is not a good thing. Smoking a cigar is not a good thing. It's It will hurt you. And I made a prayer for those brothers that they would stay clean and stay pure and not be influenced by bad things or not be wrapped up by a fast life or by a wealthy life with the negative aspects of those things. It saddens me to see a, a great man yield to something small or something weak uh, like cigars or, or the need to look cool. You'll see many persons online, they have they were they have cigars because they're they're not inherently strong. They don't feel inherently masculine and, and you know they don't feel like a killer inside. And so they use all these tools, these props to make themselves look masculine, make themselves look strong because they don't feel it in here where it counts. So you never have seen me with a cigar, a cigarette or anything like this, and you never will. And I have some dumb Arab broads. One dumb Arab broad in Dubai was telling me that she does hookah and immediately I was like, you're done. You're done. Cause that's stupid. <laughs> you're done here. But I pray for those brothers. I really do uh, for the Tates and for fresh and fit because I, I want them all to be free of, um, these kinds of things because they're, they're hurtful. You know, it might look cool in some way, some sick way. It doesn't look cool to me, but it's going to hurt you. And these are great men. These are influential men. And, you know, there's a difference between when one of these gentlemen will smoke a cigar and like a random guy out in the world will smoke a cigar. There's young men who admire these guys who are watching. And so your vice is multiplied. You see, it is one thing for you to engage in a dirty act or a low act by yourself in privacy. It's yet another thing to engage in this act when people are watching you and you're an influential man. If you're a great man, you do have a burden that you carry. It is the burden to know that you are you are a teacher and uh, we ought not teach people the wrong things. And so, you know, it, it's a sad thing to see that happen. And so I do pray for those guys to have strength because I know that they are going up against a lot of challenges, a lot of wickedness around them just because of the money and the fame. And I pray for their strength and their goodness. And I really do want them to live a pure life for their own goodness and also for those who watch. And uh, I encourage you all to uh, continue living a clean life. Anyways, um, uh, thank you for that question, Saints. Carrying on, shout out to uh, tj 2 Smoothie writes, I'm currently organizing my affairs and routine for the next month. I sent a cash app two lives ago and sent a super chat to the email. Would you be so kind as to offer perspective on it? Peace of the saints. Bro, you're going to have to resend it. <laughs> you go, you're going to have to resend that. Send it to the email uh, below right now. There's no way in hell I'm about to be able to fish that up. Just click resend right now. Shout out to Ricky. He writes, no question, just supporting. I appreciate you. Really do appreciate you, Ricky. And he's been supporting for a long time. Yeah, there's no way in hell uh, <laughs> I'm going to pull that up. Uh, shout out to uh, Lord Geotron supporting the work. Appreciate you. And the whole bit about the smoking is um, is not to degrade anyone or put anyone down. It's it's me saying I love these guys. I want these guys to or not. I, I have love for these guys. I want these guys to be happy and healthy and to be a good example and to stick to who they are. You know, sometimes we get among other people, we, we might lose a little bit of who we are. That's why we have, we have a three sins Bible. Number one, be yourself. Number two, be good to yourself. Number three, be good to good people. Be yourself, be who you are. If you don't smoke, don't smoke. If you don't drink, don't drink. Number two, um, be good to yourself. You know, don't do things that hurt you. It is not worth any price. And then be good to good people. That's why I say be around good people. They're going to nourish you. You know, they're going to do the right thing. They're going to lead you in the correct uh, direction. Your company is very important. Shout out to Chung supporting the work as well. Someone said I missed their super chat. I, I don't see one that I missed. If I did, if you could uh, just remind me. 
Anyways, carrying on. I'm all about gaining good knowledge, but do not pursue new knowledge uh, in a way that it saps you of exercising um, the, the good knowledge you already have. Like some of you guys doubt yourselves. You don't acknowledge that you do know the answer. You, you do know right from wrong. You do have good perspectives. You do have accurate instincts. Do not doubt yourself know that you have the goods. So pursuing new knowledge is, it can be good, but focus on how do I use the good information I already have? Don't split your attention too many ways. You can only do so many things. Also, rely on trusted persons. I'm not saying don't make new friends. Do make new friends. Do continue to grow your network. But ask yourself, do I already have a whole well of resources that I'm failing to properly utilize? Do I already have people around me who are intelligent, who are skilled, who have other people they can introduce me to? So I'm talking to a trusted person who can introduce me to another trusted person. Sometimes we go out and reach for new things when it's not necessary. I'll give you one ma major mistake I made. When I was going to get one of my cars wrapped, um, I told my assistant to find me a good place to wrap the car. She did all this research. She said, hey, these are the guys that we should use based on my research. So I used them. And I've been quite disappointed, honestly. My good friend, Jabrizi, who's trusted, I trust him. He's a reliable guy. He lives life at a, a high level. I could have asked him, bro, who wrapped your car? It didn't even occur to me to ask him. I should have. Trusted people are a great resource to you. Because he's going to give me an honest perspective. And if he's happy with his rap, I know I'll be happy with mine because I know his standards are high. If you utilize trusted people in your life, your life will be easier, more predictable. You'll be less susceptible to being cheated, lied to, and defrauded. So over rely on trusted people, use them as a primary source. Saints, I'll give you some time to send in your comments, questions as we begin to wind down. I acknowledge Irvin. Okay, I actually got your question already. We will be getting an email out within a couple of days. And I understand why you're asking. Um, we just have a lot going on, but we will make sure everything is uh, done for you. And we will deliver on all of the promises of the trip, uh, which are your suits, your dress shirt, and your shoes, and your accommodations, and your ground travel. Shout out to DK, writes peace to the Saints tuition. Appreciate you. Okay. TJ writes, your pearl, uh, Matthew 7, 6, your pearls may be wasted upon this rebellious woman. At any rate, I recently dealt with a woman who is not on my level. Unorganized, poor listener. Ooh, that's the worst. A female that's a poor listener. That is the worst. I decided to cut her off, and the same day she got in a car accident. <laughs> well, now you ain't got to deal with her. Uh, she was always suffering, and I'm always progressing, right? You feel me? Thank you for reminding me to stay amongst prosperous people. Peace, it, bruh, I'm telling you. Second email, he writes, okay, that was the first one. Okay, got it. Great, very good. I appreciate you sharing that. And that's a good note. You know, there's some people that are always in need, and they're going to stay in need. That's who they actually are. And that's why it's really not worth helping them because no matter how much you help, they'll be back around. There are people I've lent money to that all they want, they never pay it back, but then they turn around and ask for more money. It's like, God damn. So I realized that you, you just got to not give them any ever because they will always be in need. That's how they like to live. Some people are self-saboteurs. They will ensure that they themselves never make progress. Shout out to Lord Geotron. I also acknowledge History Packet. I love that name. Okay, I just uh, set two new goals and, and I rewrote them. So I want to share uh, some aspect of it. So one of my goals is for December 2024. That's kind of like the like the deadline for it. Obviously, there are things building up to it. And it, it's to buy a particular piece of property in a particular city. I settled on the country that I want. 
And there was initially one city and then I changed the city. I updated it once I got new, better information. Then I also have the amount of square meters listed as well. So I'm becoming more precise. That's why I would rewrite it. Then I have another uh, near term goal, which is April 1, become a dedicated YouTuber on money, women and geopolitics, which is to say, I actually want to like stop so many of the other things that I'm doing and focus on YouTube as of April 1. I want to actually try make a better effort to be a YouTuber, which also is inclusive of, you know, if someone says, hey, what do you do for a living? I'm a YouTuber, full stop. You know, before it's like, you know, I have just so much to say. I do this business, I do that. Nah, I'm a YouTuber, full stop. And I'll tell you why. Shout out to Parth supporting the work. Appreciate you. Um, because focus is something that is going to help you progress, but it's also going to help others understand you better and how they can interact with you and, you know, engage in commerce with you. Um, so I want to share a few, you know, anecdotes, if you will just on how to present yourself, how to comport yourself as a man and as a businessman. So you see, if you're a man, you should be a businessman and how certain you know, micro interactions matter even when you think they don't matter. Year, listen to me, this is crazy. I may have told this already, um, but this is crazy. To me, I, at least to me, it was crazy. So I was in the wind, which is known as the most upscale um, resort in Las Vegas. And I think that's largely true. The customer service is not what it used to be. So I don't frequent the wind as much. Um, there's another resort that is my favorite and you'll see me in there consistently. But anyways, I was at the wind long, long time ago. And, I, and I'm telling you this story, stream of consciousness, but this is not I hope you understand it as I'm telling it. I'm telling you the story with a bird's eye view, but this is not how I remember. Let me just get into it. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna tell it like this. All right, here we go. I get into an elevator at the wind, right? Now the wind has different ele elevator, collections of elevators that go up to, to rooms. The wind is organized basically according to class. So there's the regular rooms, the regular elevator. So if you go into these set of elevators, you're going to like a standard room. Then there's like the, the tower suites. So if you go in into these elevators, you guaranteed have a suite or better. This is where the nice stuff is. And then there's like another set of elevators, like VIP elevators. If you're not, you're a celebrity, you're very wealthy. Like you, you can come in to a private entrance. No one has to see you. You can go up to your room. You're, you're doing really well. So there's like three bays of elevators and they're all according to your, your buying level, essentially. I go into the VIP elevators and so it's me, it's my assistant. I get on the elevator and then someone was coming. I could see them through the mirror. They were coming, trying to catch the elevator. So I put out my hand to keep the elevator open. White guy gets on well-dressed, smart looking white guy, you know, nice uh, glasses, real sharp looking guy. He gets on the elevator. He's like, hey, Marquette. <laughs> and so as he said, I was like, what? <laughs> What's up? And I'm trying to figure out who this guy is because... He clearly is not at work because he's not wearing like a work uniform. He's not wearing a proper business suit. So he's not like a boss at the institution. He's not wearing a business suit. He's definitely not wearing a work uniform. He looks me dead in my eyes. He says, hey, Marquette, pronounce my name correctly. And I'm like, who is this guy? And then so I immediately look at my assistant, like off of some like, do we know this guy? Who is this guy? And then she looks at me and gives me that face. Like, I don't have a clue. And I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. And then he reaches out his hand. He's like, Stacy. He was like, yeah, we, we met like maybe about a year and a half, two years ago. He was like, yeah, we're, we're down over there doing X, Y, and Z. And I was like, oh, I was like, Stacy. I was like, you make the gates. So you make the gates. He was like, yes, yes, I make the gates. I said, all right, cool. He was like, yeah, man, nice to see you. He was like, maybe I'll see you downstairs a little bit later. I said, yeah, absolutely. Now, let me rewind that. There's so many levels to what, what just happened. Level one. Why did I reach out my hand to hold the elevator to let this guy on? I'm not going to lie to you. I wouldn't normally do that. Only reason I did that is because we're in the VIP elevators, going up to the VIP rooms. This person's a VIP. He's probably an interesting person. I want him to get on. I'm interested to see who's getting on. Could be a celebrity, could be a ball player, could be a businessman. It's someone that's worth knowing. So I hold the elevator, let him come on. That's number one. Thinking. I always have my thinking cap on. If I was in the regular bay of elevators for like the regular rooms, nah, I'd be like, nah, 
press the close button. I got somewhere to be. I don't want to meet this person. Press the close button. She's probably some drunk broad that spent, you know, that spent up all her money this weekend to feel like she's a baller in Vegas. Nah, close the elevator. But anyway, so that's step one. That's why I kept the elevator. I held the elevator for him. Step two, he gets in. He's dr- dressed really sharp, really smart. And, and honestly, he was dressed like above what you would expect a middle-aged white guy to dress in terms of style, right? Like he looked like he could be in show business, could be like a movie producer. Like he, you know, he's he's on the scene kind of guy. So I saw him, okay, he's a good looking guy, like well dressed, looking good, looking proper. And he says, Hey, how are you, Mark? But pronounces my name perfectly. So it lets me know we've talked before. Like he's like legitimately familiar. And then he waited a little bit and he's like, Yeah, you know, about a year and a half, two years ago, you know, we were downstairs and blah, blah. I was like, oh, okay. And then immediately when he said that, I was like, You're the guy who makes the gates. Yeah, because I put his name together. His name's Stacy, which is a kind of a woman's name. And I was like, oh, boom, I remember now. You make the gates. And when I say the gates, what he does is like, say you have an, an estate, a mansion, and when people drive into your estate, you know, there's like a, a mechanized, large, ornate gate of whatever material you like that opens up and maybe the gate says like, you know, Sasson headquarters or it has your logo or your, your family crest on it. It's like, you know, some real baller shit for big super ballers who have these huge gates that open up when you drive into their, their estate. That's what he does. Now that's why I remember him. Cause I thought it was an interesting business and I know he's doing very, very well at it. And he's his client base, like guys like Steven Spielberg, like the big, the big dogs, not only does he make gates for like individuals, but also for like, if you have like a studio, you know, like the Disney ranch, for example, makes gates for these kinds of like large, um, plots of land. So this is what he does at a very high level. He was smart enough when I met him to say, oh, okay, you know, based on our experience here, based on how people are interacting with this guy, based on where we are and what we're spending, this is the guy who can buy one of my gates. Like he could buy one of my gates, whether it's for himself or for one of his his businesses or what have you. So let me remember him. Let's lock in. Smart on his part. He's a business owner, a thinker. On my part, I know he's on my level and he's doing really well in his business. So of course I want to remember him. But And I remember when I met him, I was walking up. There were a number of tables that I could go to. And I remember looking like, oh man, this white man is sharp right here. Like has real style and flair. You know, like a lot of guys, like well-off white guys, they don't have as much flair to their style. You know, they're, they're going to wear a blue blazer, some khaki pants, you know, some, some Gucci loafers. You know, simple, muted, muted. But, you know, Brody has some flair. He was wearing some Paisley when I saw him the first time. I was like, yeah, let's go over to this guy. My assistant, same assistant was actually with me that time. So I remember uh, meeting the guy and directly choosing to go to where he was. And um, you know, we had a good conversation. His wife had came over, good looking lady, and you know, had some uh, good engagement. And just the fact that a year and a half, or a year and a half, two years later, he still remembered how to pronounce the name, remember me. Now, granted, maybe he follows me on social media, who knows? Um, surely he probably looked me up, but it teaches you the difference between how bosses think and how peons think. So that's one story. Hold on to that. Now let me take you to another story. True story. Also, there's a brand new resort that opened up in Las Vegas. And when a new resort opens up, their number one goal is to get in VIPs, get in high net worth individuals. So there's a whole, you know, collection of VIP hosts and, you know, people within the institution. And when you open a new resort, what the new resort does is they'll they'll skim all the cream of the crop off of the the win and the Bellagio and resorts world. They'll try to go and poach employees. And when those employees come, they come with a Rolodex of their contacts. You know the 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 rappers, the musicians, the actors, the singers, the producers, the businessmen, and they try to bring those guys into the restaurants, into the casino, and to the hotels and you know, get the players in place so that they can have a strong uh, resort. So anyways, new resort opens. They had asked me to come down a couple of times and I, I didn't have any like major interests uh, to go down. Didn't have any reason. I have a, you know, good restaurants I like, you know, but you know, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll come check you guys out one time. So I went down there and there was a, a conference being hosted at that resort. And so I'm at a particular location and there's five white guys who have, uh, they're, they're dressed up and they're wearing a lanyard. And so I, I come up and, you know, as I'm walking, I'm like, oh, hey, Marqua, hey, how you doing? You know, people coming over to, to greet me. Oh, hey, it's nice to see you here. I'm surprised you hadn't been here before. Now, 
I don't know if they just happen to be there. I don't know if 100% of these people actually knew my name. Maybe they're using facial recognition. I don't know. But either way, it was clear to the, the middle management guys at the conference that like, okay, this guy is somebody. So then they're like, oh, hey, man, uh, what's your name? Uh, Mark Clay, nice to meet you. Oh, okay, where are you from? You know, basic questions. So then I say, oh, yeah, well, what conference are you guys in here for? And the guy closest to me, he says, oh, well, I'm in sales. You know, it's a sales conference, kind of like, you know, software. I was like, oh, okay, well, what, what kind of software? He was all, you know, like data, stuff like that. I was like, okay. Now, in my head, I immediately said, you're an idiot and a loser and you're broke. Already, you're an idiot, you're a loser, and you're broke. All of those added together, that's who you are. The reason I knew that is because, number one, if you're in sales, your job is to convey your business or the opportunity well. That's your actual job. You should always have a one-liner as to what your business does or what your offer is. And more importantly, you never know who you're talking to. When you're dealing with people who are not high net worth individuals or individuals with fame, clout, influence, something that's useful you want to make that contact. You want to network. You want to be on good relations because you don't know where the sale will come from. The sale might come from him, might come from his wife, might come from his business colleague, might come from his cousin. He might buy something as a gift. You don't know. You want your thinking cap on, especially when you're dealing with high ticket sales. High ticket sales might take time. High ticket sales might take you to meet someone multiple times or see them in multiple places. High ticket sales are relationship base. So like, for example, with uh, Stacy, the moment I get an estate, if I want to build a gate, even if I'm building the estate in South Africa, I'm going to call up Stacy, whether it's to have him build it directly or he's like, oh, we don't operate in that market. Okay, cool, man. Like, can I pay you a couple thousand? Can I give you like, you know, eight or 10,000 to be a consultant to tell me how much this should cost, what the materials are, you know, how long this should take? Because I'm doing this with a South African company. I don't live there. I don't know what their standards are. I want to make sure it's done really well. I know you do, do this for Spielberg and all these guys. Let me give you 7000 just to oversee the project to make sure they're doing it right. We'll have them send over all their plans to you. You see what I'm saying? Or I got my friend Mark Pfeiffer, who's a real estate mogul. He's always doing deals. Mark's like, hey, man, I'm doing this, this big project, X, Y, and Z. You know, we, we're going to put a gate around. Oh, you're going to do a gate? Who's your guy? Oh, I don't have a guy. I met this guy named Stacy, really cool guy. I can put you in contact. Say no more. Boom. Facilitate the deal. People who do high ticket sales, they're aware that if you, there's not a lot of people who can spend $80,000, $50,000 on a gate. There's not a lot of those people. It's a small group. Similarly, there's not a lot of people who can afford to stay in the tower suites or the VIP section at Win. It's a small group. Let's be friends. Because when you're going to spend $80,000 with somebody or $50,000 with somebody, you need trust that you're not going to get cheated or defrauded. So trust is important. When I can see Stacy there a couple of times, I know that he's a legit successful guy. He doesn't need to steal from me. He knows I'm a legit successful guy. If I give him the, if I give him the order, he doesn't need me to put down a 20% deposit. You know, he knows that we're, we're solid. We can get to work. Uh, funny story, speaking of deposits, this was true comedy. This is a real story here. <laughs> someone had DM me on IG. They say, Hey, do you need anyone to edit your videos, produce reels, things like this? And, um, I give a lot of work to, to you guys, to people who are members. I'm always trying to, you know, put some money in your pocket. Um, but anyways, this guy had DM me, never heard of this guy. He's not a member. But I was like, all right, yeah, I do need some editing. I was like, you know, what's your rate? He says, Oh, my rate is this. I was like, okay, cool. Here's three video links. Here's the timestamps. Turn these into reels. Um, I, I forget what his rate was, but for the total, like say it was like $10 per reel, right? So $10 per reel, I asked him to do three reels. That's $30 US dollars I would owe him. So I say, yeah, do these three. I said, what's your form of uh, your method of payment? He says, um, PayPal. Okay, cool. Now here's a funny thing. I don't know this guy from Adam, but just cause I'm very busy in this case, I was about to just go ahead and pay him straight up front just cause I'm busy and it's like chump change, right? Whether he does it or not, I don't even care if he defrauds me fine. You know, I don't have enough time to loop back and remember to pay him. So I'm just going to pay him now. So I don't have to like go back through this. So anyways, I said, what's your PayPal? He's like, okay, my PayPal is this, right? I'm logging into my PayPal so I can go through and send the PayPal, the payment to this guy up front, which is not the proper way. It's a small amount of money. and I'm very busy and I'm just giving him a trial run. We can arrange a real deal after this. This is nothing. So I'm logging into my PayPal. Then I get another message from him and his message says, oh yeah, you, you got to put up a 50% deposit. What? A 50% deposit? So then I immediately knew, up. Oh, I don't want to work with this guy. Why? 
if you're actually doing good work from for real YouTubers or successful YouTubers or successful people, you don't need a deposit of 15 US dollars. Like $15 is nothing. So being that you're asking me for a deposit, it lets me know that you're in poverty and you don't have trust. Like there's something weird about the way you do business. Um, so I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do business with this guy. So I, I ended it there. Boom. Hey, don't do these reels. We're good. Now, if you don't, if you can't take a $30 risk in your business, you don't have that kind of liquidity to have $30 in accounts receivable. We can't do business together because you clearly don't have other clients. You clearly aren't successful at what you do. I want to deal with people who are already successful. I'm not about to help you become successful. I need somebody that's already on. I'm not here to put nobody on. So he actually screwed himself out of money because if he was smart enough, he would have just did them for free. Like, came, hey, Marquette, um, I charge this much for reels. Let me do four of them for free just to show you I can do it. And let's see you get some good results. And then you're going to pay this rate after that. I would have did that. He came at me, said, hey, I'm selling reels at this price. I said, cool, what's your price? I'll pay it. No negotiation, no nothing. I'm ready to pay. And then he said, send a 50% deposit just because I could tell he was in poverty. And I don't trust people in poverty at all. I don't trust what they're likely to do because it's hard for you to think clearly when you're struggling for mere survival. If you're trying to survive, you're not thinking clearly. You're under stress. So human beings don't operate well under stress. So I was like, nope, no deal. So he basically screwed himself out of a deal, uh, potentially over tens of thousands of dollars by being petty over $30. Bosses are able to think long term. Stacy met me and he was thinking long term. This man might have properties throughout the country, throughout the world. He can afford to get this kind of stuff. He surely has contacts that can afford this stuff. He can recommend me. He was thinking the dumb guy, middle management, that's uh, you know attending the conference. Clearly, he's middle management. Bosses don't attend conferences like that unless you're lecturing. You're invited there to, to be a paid speaker. You don't attend conference. You don't want to walk around with a lanyard, you know, exchanging business cards with a thousand random irrelevant people. So he's middle management. But he wasn't smart enough to think like, oh, I don't know who this guy is or what he made his success based on. I might be able to sell him a solution. He didn't even think that. He had no clue who I am, what my background is. My background is in software. In fact, I got a great offer from Sienna to come in and lead their enterprise department. He didn't know that. So this guy was a goofball. Like he wasn't even thinking money. That's one thing I'm always thinking is money. What's the opportunity? Your thinking and the quality of your thinking and your ability to foresee is going to be hugely important in your success. There's recently a situation, young man was at Assassin headquarters. I could see that there's a mistake he was about to make. I said, hey, by the way, heads up, please don't do this. He said, okay, no problem. By the end of the day, he had did the exact thing I thought he was going to do on accident. He did it anyways. That was not a measure of his intelligence. It was a measure of his ability to be careful and his need to win. People are often like, oh, am I smart enough? Yeah, you are smart enough. Are you careful enough? Are you detail focused enough? Are you focused on the prize enough? People ain't focused. You're plenty smart. People are often thinking they ain't smart enough. No, you're smart enough, but you're not focused enough. You're smart enough, but you're not hungry enough. You're smart enough, but you're not ambitious enough. You're smart enough, but you're not serious enough. Come on now. I've met people say, oh, I'm not good with names. You don't have to be good with names. You got to be good with the names of people who matter. That's it. Two and a half years ago, Stacy's like, walks into the elevator. Hey, Marquette, bruh, listen to me. I'm going to remember that man's name. Stacy, I'm going to remember his name and his face. He's never going to walk by me again without knowing his name because it let me know that he's sharp. Brody is sharp. I was talking to my assistant for 10 minutes. Like, how did that man remember my name? She's like, Marquette, you dress crazy. She's like, he, she's like, you either really dressed up, damn near like you just left the gala, or you're wearing some wild stuff. He's, he's like, and you're the only black guy, right? She's like, wherever you're at, everybody got money. You're the only black guy, and you're wearing a crazy outfit. You're easy to remember. I was like, all right, but damn, two years later, she's like, look. I was like, all right, cool. Well, I'm going to remember, dude, because he's sharp, and I was impressed. He made himself, he made me a client of his. He not even sold me anything, just the man that he is. I'm a client. When I first saw him, no homo. He was dressed well, looked sharp, well-groomed. Boom, that's step one, complete. Then he remembers a name two years later. Brody is intelligent. He's careful. He going to get the job done. If I give him some money and give him a job, it's going to get done. I have full faith. And he's already successful. He doesn't need my money. He doesn't need to cheat me. I'm in. I'm bought into who he is. That's one thing you guys don't realize. You're always trying to sell something. 
Stop trying to sell the product. Sell you. Are you worth buying? Would someone buy you if you were on the shelf? Would someone buy you off of the shelf? That's what you're really selling. People forget about that. Shout out to Mr. Chambliss, writes Immigration to la República Marquetiana in a real way. May I acknowledge Andrew writes Peace of Saints. I'm glad to hear you will focus more on geopolitics. What do you think of RFK Jr. as an independent presidential candidate? He doesn't stand a chance. He says reasonable things, but he doesn't stand a chance. May I acknowledge super nifty Susie supporting the work. I appreciate you. Shout out to Carter writes, I love these lives. Appreciate you actually supporting them. People say they love things, but they don't really love it. You know, people are often inaccurate, but when you support, I see there's a level of seriousness there. You know, I remember I recently posted a video on the Saint channel. It was on Mr. Rogers. Great video. I enjoy it myself. Good information. They're very reflective and thoughtful. Took out time to put it together. I stopped making videos like that because nobody cares, <laughs> right? As a businessman, I realized that the product is not about what I like. It's about what you like. And I posted the video and the first like 15 comments like, oh, we need to do more content like this, but no one had supported it. And so I just like made a post. I said, hey, like we don't do content like this because no one supports it. it. might be good content, but it's not good enough that people support it. So it's not worth doing. You always have to be a man and a businessman. Then, you know, some people supported it to show that they're really about that. But remember in life as a man, you know, you don't get the free ride in the fancy car. The children do. Yeah, I buy, I buy things for kids all the time. You know, like if I pull up to a gas station and there's some kids uh, selling chocolates, yeah, but how much did all your chocolate cost? Seven dollars or four dollars a bar. You got thirteen bars. Yeah, I buy all of it. Give it to me. And I, some cases I take the chocolate, or some cases I want like if I'm going somewhere, I'll take all the chocolate and give it out where I when I arrive where I'm at. If I'm not going anywhere, I'll just give them the give them the money and let them keep the chocolate, but make them go give it out for free. Um, cause I, I don't want you to have product. You hear me? I want you out of product now. I want you to go back through your process. Um, but the point is, uh, kids I'll do that for, I don't eat chocolate. I don't eat chocolate from random strangers at a gas station. Uh, but I will buy their chocolate just cause they're a kid, just cause they're a child. Women, you know, you know, I'll give them, do them a solid every now and then men. I almost never do a solid for Unless you're one of us, you hear me? If you ain't one of us, yeah, you could die in the street. I, it doesn't mean much to me. I don't know you. Unless I verify that you're a good person or you're part of this thing of ours, I don't know you. You're a stranger to me and a potential enemy, a potential friend. But I'd rather treat you like an enemy because it's a safer thing to do. You dig? So don't ever expect any favor or anything like that from a man. That's just not how life is going to go. Shout out to Keandre uh, supporting the word. I acknowledge part of tuition for the Mr. Rogers video analysis. I appreciate that. I acknowledge the ballers. Uh, Zudort writes, uh, peace to the saints, paying tuition, appreciate you. Shout out to the real ones. Yeah, you got to know who your friends are in this world, and you have to know who your friends are not. Mr. Lopez writes, you mentioned credit cards, but I didn't hear the entire ism. I have two cards that I pay in full every month to avoid interest. I use them for the points and get cash back or flight points from time to time. What are your thoughts? Uh, don't do it. They're trying to set you up. They're, the credit card company's goal is for you to not pay. Their goal is for you to miss a payment. Their goal is for you to be able to um, only pay the interest and not the principal. Their, their goal is for you to screw up. Their goal is not for you to be 100% responsible and pay that thing on time every month. So I don't, re I don't uh, recommend it. it it's a, you're, you're walking into, listen, I'll tell you like this. I've been places where people say, hey, you don't want to wear your jewelry here. Now, could you walk through a favela in Brazil with canary diamonds on? You could. Could you make it through there unscathed? You could. It's possible, but it's improbable. Not recommended. Could you pay all your payments on time for a credit card company and never have to deal with interest payments? It's possible. But it's improbable. I don't recommend you you do that. The, the goal of the credit card company is to get you into debt and to make you pay as much as possible. If you borrow $1,000, their, their goal is to get you to pay $8,000 by the time the dust settles. 
You know, their goal is to get you to pay $30,000 by the time the dust settles. They want to give you as little as much, as little as possible, and then take from you as much as possible. Shout out to Miles supporting the work. That's their goal. That's their actual business model. You know, there's some things that are just scams. Like, for example, a gym membership, uh, an insurance company. The gym membership, their goal is to get you to pay for a membership but never show up and work out. That's their goal. Insurance company, their goal is to make you buy insurance but never use it. That's their goal. Credit card company is to get you to borrow a thousand but pay back eight thousand. That's their goal. Their business is not a clean, straightforward business to where they're like, look, um, you know, if you buy these hand wraps, I'm gonna charge you 15 bucks and I want you to get every bit of value out of these hand wraps. I want these hand wraps to last as long as possible. That's a that's a straightforward, honest, clean business. You hear me? This shirt that says Sassin or nothing on the back, I want you to get this shirt. I want it to last as long as possible. You hear me? This beanie at mdblabel.com, this beanie is dope because I'm shocked at how long it lasts because I'm about to go run because it's very cold here. And I'm going to sweat in this beanie. I'm going to put in the washing machine. That's what I mostly do in this beanie. And it, it comes out just as fresh as always. I want you to get maximum value out of the products. I don't want you to have to throw them away and buy another one. Insurance is not straightforward. They want you to get the insurance and never use it. They want you to pay for something you don't get to use. The credit card company, they want you to spend $1,000 and pay back $8,000. Um, uh, what was the other example I had? Oh, the gym membership, they only have room for 50 people to work out in the gym at a time. So, But they want to sell 800 memberships and hope that 750 of you guys are irresponsible and you don't get the value out of your membership by showing up. That's the world we live in. Now, that world only becomes hard and harsh if you being the doofus that's going to get the gym membership but not show up to the gym. I don't even currently have a gym membership. True story. I work out at my house. I work out every day. You heard me? I work out at Assassin Headquarters. Yeah, I don't have a gym membership because I know that I'm not going to utilize it. But you guys see me and follow me on Instagram. Drop the Instagram so they can see how bosses live. You dig? Marquette Devon. But you guys will see me um, Assassin HQ. I got the speed bag. I got the reflex bag. I got the jump rope. I, I get it in. Saving money. I could afford a gym membership. It's just I wouldn't use it. So that's your goal is to protect your money. Their goal is to take your money. You dig? I mean, that's what it is. It's just like you can't get mad at the police. Their job or their goal is not their job, but their goal is to lock you up, fill up them prisons, and your goal is to stay out of prison. You dig? That's what it is. Shout out to Jonathan. He writes, thank you. Wish I heard about this live sooner. And I acknowledge Dedrick. He writes, peace to the saints. Indeed, peace to the saints. Saints, I'll give you some time to send in your comments, questions as we wind down. You, you can't get what you can't get mad at uh, people pursuing their own self-interest. You, you got to ask yourself, am I a part of the right group or am I a part of any group? For example, the government is just a group. It's just a group of people. They're not God. They're not ordained to rule over you. They're nothing. They're just a group of people, mostly who are nerds and psychopaths. Uh, who want to control others, but but they're not special. And so you just have to ask yourself, am I a part of a group that will protect me? We have privatized prisons in America where their goal is to get you into the prison so that they can charge you a bunch of money. So if you make a phone call in the prison, they're charging you like all this money just to talk on the phone, way above the market rate. If you get commissary in prison and you want to buy a cup of noodles, you're not paying for what you would uh, a cup of noodles cost out in the world. You're paying more money. Also, they have a thousand scams with the prison system and the jail system. Uh, for example, this is what they did to me. Um, they seized a bunch of my cash money. And when they were, oh, actually, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to talk about this. My, my lawyer's advice, we still got cases pending. But the point is, they have so many different things that they do to, to steal money from you. And you have to say, okay, well, you got to beat them or you got to join them. So you join the government and you get to be a part of the scam, or you, have a group around you that supports you and protects you from the scam, right? But you can't just stand there and say, oh, the government's bad. We know they're bad and corrupt. What are you going to do? You're either going to join them so you can be protected or you need a group of people around you like the assassin so you can have people who can contend with the things that they try to do against you. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. I want to take a look at something. 
so let's look at the, the mental illness. So this person writes, unsubscribing from this fraud channel. And, and the photo appears to be a female. And, and why did they say that? So let's see. It's a fraud channel. So then they have a super chat, which I put on screen. And the super chat is at $9.99. If you look below, it says $15 plus will be answered. It literally says that on the banner that's going by. It reads $15 plus will be answered. You can see it right there, boom. It says $15 plus will be answered. This is $9.99. So why are you mad at me when it clearly states $15 plus will be answered below on the banner that's been there for two hours now? That's what I don't understand. Like, why am I the bad guy? Because you're not using your reading skills. Shout out to Teddy Fresh. He writes, which uh, website to cop the bean? This, is, this one is at mdblabel.com. So they write, terrible. My question was amazing. Um, so I was asked a question that would be helpful to all saints to hear. I asked a detailed question. Can you answer? That would be great. But see, what troubles me is your nature comes out. And I want all everyone to pay attention. You learn someone in their disappointment. You learn someone when they don't get the order. And this is really important to me. There have been situations in which I had to do a big deal with someone in enterprise sales, B2B. And I knew that I wanted to give this person in this group the deal, but I told them no, just to see how they react. And then I see they react the wrong way or they become rude or unresponsive. Then I know if I'd have given you my money, your customer service would have been bad because you're all about the sale. You're not about the relationship. You're not about the client experience. You're not about the, you know, you don't have integrity. You're just all about make money now, make money now. You're not a good person, you see. And people come wearing a variety of masks. You know, this person, um, they see clearly below right here. It reads $15 plus will be answered. So why are you any better than anybody else? Like, I don't know you. Like, we don't have a previous relationship. You're not, you know, like in my family. I don't know you to be a member. So why would I treat you better than people I've known for years? There are people on here watching me right now. They've supported the work for years. And I'm not reading anything unless it's 15 or above. So why would I prioritize you a stranger over them and break the rules, which would make it unfair to them? Like that wouldn't be right. That wouldn't be honorable. So just as much as you want me to read your thing, should I slap everyone else in the face to, to break the rule for you a stranger? That doesn't make any sense. But what I want everyone to observe is how quickly this person flips on me, right? Like notice how quickly they flipped and all of a sudden they're asking me a question. I'm a reasonable source of information. I'm reliable enough to ask a question. But then when you don't meet the requirements, all of a sudden I'm a fraudster and I'm a bad guy. This is the nature of the people that we're dealing with in the world. They're not good people. And granted, some of us might make mistakes every now and then. This might be a female. So sometimes, you know, females are quick to emotion. But I want to caution all of you men, be slow to anger. Be very thoughtful. Because you don't know who you're talking to and you don't know sometimes the ramifications of what you do. Your, your tongue can create so much trouble for you. One thing I do want to do is I want to give this individual the opportunity to apologize. So super nifty Susie, if you're a real person, here, there's the link right there. You can come online. I'm not going to chastise you. I'm not going to be mean to you. I just want to give you the opportunity to come on and apologize and we can have a, a brief discussion. Shorty said, I'm unsubscribing from this fraud channel. And you see, I talk a lot about loyalty. We're in an era where people don't, they have poor social skills. It's like a lot of people are autistic um, they have no social skills. They have no ability to interact with human beings. It's like they don't go outside. There you go. 15 bucks and above to be read aloud. And that banner has been there for two hours. And there's nothing wrong with not having 15 bucks. I mean, we've all been there. I've been there myself. I've, there have been many times I've not had 15 bucks for sure. Many times. Oh, the person's pretending that they've disappeared now? Is that what's going on? Got you. Anyways, 
what does the question say? Do you have any advice for staying confident when facing intense criticism? You might be facing criticism because of the person you are and the way you behave. That's the truth of it. I'm now interviewing for more senior roles and I feel like an imposter despite being an elite, having an elite education. Well, you might be an imposter. Let's see who you are. Click the link. Come on. Let's have a brief conversation. This might be a good uh, thing for you. If you can't submit yourself to being corrected or to apologizing, then you know that says a lot about who you are and the integrity. So maybe you are an imposter. You don't feel like an imposter because of your race or because of your gender. You might feel like an imposter because you as an individual are an imposter. We have to go through experiences to, you know, to build us. But if you shy away from those experiences, you'll never be built. Um, and if it's a senior level position, you should have 15 bucks. And whether you do or do not have 15 bucks is irrelevant. There's nothing wrong with not having 15 bucks. It happens. Um, but there is a lot wrong with um, flipping on people, being negative, being dishonest, spreading lies. There's a lot wrong with that. And uh, we don't condone that over here. And we all make mistakes as a human being. So if you would like to present yourself to correct it, I welcome you. But it appears you've disappeared from the chat. So that may be the measure of you. Keandre writes, if you could add this to her super chat, uh, this, re this is to represent how saints vouch for each other. Well, she already revealed herself not to be like us. Shout out to Juan. He writes, is it better or not to tell your woman about wanting to be non-monogamous? Some red, <laughs> red pill creators pr uh, purport we do the opposite and be straight up. So number one, when you say your woman, what do you mean by your woman? Is this the woman that you plan to have kids with? Is this your main girl for the time being? That has to be clarified and it matters a lot. So that's number one. What do you mean by your woman? What's her true position today and what will her position be in the future? That's number one. The number two is how do you perceive her in terms of being able to handle the truth in general and the truth in particular uh, with regard to this? Is she a jealous woman? How does she regard you? Does she respect you as a boss and live in reality? Those are all factors. And then what is your ultimate goal with this woman in particular and also with regards to your non-monogamous activities? You see, the challenge is that if you are to make a declaration to her, you're, you're going to kind of have to stick by it. So you could leave things open in as much as saying, hey, you're in a monogamous relationship. I'm going to do what I want in all circumstances. Or you might tell her something more specific, which I don't recommend, which is like, hey, you're going to be monogamous and I'm going to have one other girl or I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. As soon as you put something specific, they're going to try to hold you to that and then use that against you, um, which I promise you will be problematic and unpleasant in the long term. But what you have to deal with right now is how much does this girl matter? Is she going to be there in the long term? Do I need to tell her the truth? Is it useful to her and me? And um, is she a jealous hearted person? How is she going to factor into this arrangement? And also, who am I? Let me let you guys in on a secret. Sometimes you don't know who you are. And what I mean by that is, you know, there's some of you guys that might think that you just want one other woman. You know, you want two girlfriends or two wives when really you might be a sex crazed animal. And you're just trying to get your meat wet indiscriminately. You have to know who you are before you can uh, explain this arrangement. And also you have to know that none of this is going to be simple, especially with a disobedient, hard-headed, prideful woman, because she's going to try to dictate to you what the terms are. I remember there was one time I was dealing with a black woman in Baltimore who was from Atlanta, and I actually did not want to be with her at all. And I told her like, hey, I, we're, we're done here. And she said, no, no, like, please don't go. You know, like, why do you want to go? I said, yeah, I want to have other women. And the truth is I wasn't leaving her to have other women. I was leaving her because I just didn't want her in particular. I you know, acknowledged that there was a lack of merit in various areas. So I just didn't want to deal with her. But I just used as an excuse being in my early 20s. I said, yeah, I, I want other women. She says, you can have other women. You can have other women. Just keep me. OK, cool. So then as soon as she said that, I was like, all right, cool. I'm a function. I remember this like it was yesterday. A chick came to the house to pick me up. I'm in the house with Shorty. I told her I was going outside. And she was like, well, well where are you going? I was like, I'm about to go out with this chick. And she said, oh, you're going on a date? I was like, I guess you could call it that. Yeah, sure. She was like, yeah, well, I didn't mean that. I mean that you could have sex with them, but you can't be going out on dates with them and like hanging out and spending time. That's for me. Oh, I see. So now you're trying to dictate. 
first off, gentlemen, don't ever let anyone dictate to you, or let me not, not say anyone. Some of you guys are employees, but don't let a female dictate to you. That's number one. Number two, um, you're never going to have perfect shared understanding of anything. So you can't rely on the agreement. What you have to rely on is her position in relation to you, how she views herself in relation to you. Does she view herself as subject to you or does she view herself as equal or one who can dictate to you? So this broad's basically telling me I could just sleep with chicks, but I can't hang out with them. Oh, okay. I said, so how do you think I'm going to get to the point of sleeping with them? She's like, well, they're, you know, they're promiscuous anyway. If they want to be with a guy who has a woman, you know, they're whores. So you can just sleep with them. I was like, I don't want to sleep with whores. Like, that's not my goal is to sleep with chicks who you don't have to ever spend any investment with them. They're just down for down to get smashed. I was like, nah, I'm not trying to catch an STD out here. Like, that's not the kind of woman I like. So she was trying to dictate to me. So I had to go ahead and can her. I give you that anecdote so that you can understand that there's some women that they lie. Their emotions cause them to lie about what they're willing to accept or deal with or participate in because they think they have a greater priority, but they don't have enough self-control to actually participate in that natural structure. You see, they're too uh, jealous hearted and jealousy is not a good emotion. Jealousy is a very negative emotion. I acknowledge Carter. He writes, appreciate the stories with meaningful lessons. Absolutely. I try to use them to illuminate. I acknowledge uh, Mr. Dixon. He writes, do you still need a software dev? Yeah, at low cost. I don't want to play, uh, pay American costs. So it depends on what you can do. I don't know if you're speaking for yourself or speaking on behalf of others, but I basically want to pay an Eastern European rate. So if that's what you do, uh, send me an email. We might be able to have a conversation. Shout out to Melvin. He writes, peace is saying shout out to the to a great and respectable man. I appreciate that, man. Uh, Randy writes, peace to the saints, finishing up prayer in the sauna. Yes, sir. Magnage William says intuition, supporting the work. Shout out to uh, Mark, supporting the work as well. Appreciate you. And also resend that last batch of beats. I want to check those out. Shout out to Kenneth. He writes, tuition for the struggling saints right now. Abundance is within the mind. Pay what you owe. Yes, indeed. That, that's the key. Abundance really is in the mind. And my OG, Kevin Cox, man, I can't tell you, this ball used to be brokered in a joke at times, and he still managed to catch him abroad, man. And he managed to catch him abroad and, and function in whatever way uh, he needed to. I mean, have you never, like, went down a boulevard and seen a homeless couple? The man's homeless and the woman's homeless? Come on now. Yeah, you guys think money is more than it is. You, you've, uh, you've been tricked. <laughs> Shout out to Finn. Marquette, you teach real masculinity. What are your thoughts on the kind of masculinity embodied by the likes of Vic, Vince McMahon? Mc, is this the ball that run the, the WWE? Uh, and how would you advise young men to be mindful of such evils and pitfalls in one's own character? I'm not familiar with everything that he, he's done. I know he's been accused of some uh, sexual crimes. And of course, he's been sued. And I hear he's actually paid some settlements. So I don't know precisely what he has or hasn't done. I'm not very familiar with him, but I, I think you're talking about the fella that runs uh, WWE, what is formerly known as WWF. So thank you for uh, that question. Make sure I got everything. Yeah. Magnage Rodney, he just went and got dripped up at mdblabel.com. He actually got this joint in white, though, so it's white with the black MDB label. That's cold. He also got the black, uh, excuse me, the dark gray one. Okay, very nice. And he also got a headband, which I got all my headbands with me because I got to get in some peak shape. It's time. The time has come. Saints, it has been a pleasure at this time to fellowship with you all. Let us end this with our tradition, the creed of assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you. The creed of the assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable and I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace of the saints.